recorded live. Good evening, and welcome to our podcast. We are People Against Covert Torture and Surveillance International. And today is Monday, the 4th of July, which is Independence Day 2016. We're here on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time to educate and assist those who are targets of organized stalking, remote electronic assault, and more. And to let you know that you are not alone and that there are many thousands and millions of us nationwide and worldwide working together for our freedom. Views expressed during our podcast are those of our callers and not necessarily those of PAX International. I'm Derek Robinson, the moderator. Our guest this evening is Jamil Walls. Jamil has produced a number of YouTube videos about how he beat gang stalking. And now for some announcements. The next meeting of the Portland Support Group will be Saturday, July the 9th, 2016, from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. at the Hollywood Branch Library. 4040 Northeast Tillamook in Portland, Oregon. The contact person is Amy, and she can be reached at A-M-Y-L-A-D-E-R-Y-E-S at gmail.com. The Seattle Support Group will be having its next meeting on Saturday, July the 16th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. at the Broadview Public Library 12755 Greenwood Avenue, North. And fuck you, Alabama. bitch. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Back the fuck up. I'd like to fuck up you. Okay, the stalkers are still breaking in here. Okay, uh, to continue, uh, the next meeting of the Seattle Support Group will be at the Broadview Public Library, 12755 Greenwood Avenue, in Seattle, Washington. The contacts. For this event are Laura Solway at 206-365-6139 and Curtis Kimball at 817-901-8720. There's going to be a TI Media Day on Saturday, July 23rd, 2016. This is going to be organized by Jami Ali and will be happening in Toms River, New Jersey. And this event is basically in response to the New York Times article that came out a few weeks ago. And the time for this event is 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The eyes are going to be filmed while they provide testimonies, discuss facts, and stats regarding technologies impacting them. There's also going to be a town hall conference at the end of this uh, event. Jimmy is accepting donations, and if anyone has questions, all information is on the flyer, which is posted on the homepage of the PAX website, which is PAX, P-A-C-T-S, N-T-L dot org. I'd like to say thanks very much to all those who are becoming members of PAX International. It is much appreciated. The membership fee is $25, and you can donate by PayPal, and there are three methods to do that. You could send uh, your donation directly to info at paxntl.org. Or you can click the donate button at our website, which is paxntl.org. Or there is a PayPal link, which is paypal.me slash paxntl. You may also mail in your check or money order made payable to PAX International. The address is PAX. P-A-C-T-S, International, P.O. Box, 5405, and Hammett, California, 92544. Our guest this evening is Jamia Walls from Michigan. And she caught my attention a few weeks ago with this video entitled, I Beat Gang Stalking and What You Have to Do to Beat Gang Stalking. And while watching the videos, I appreciated his direct yet disarming approach to his stalkers. He walked up and addressed them directly in a non-confrontational manner, which diffused the fear and tension they attempted to create around him. 
He was even able to neutralize some of his stalkers who had been given false information about him. These tactics have made him safer, and he now feels comfortable walking anywhere, near or far from his home, even though surrounded by perpetrators. So at this time, we welcome to our program Jamil Rawls to tell us more about his message and how you can become free from your stalkers on this 4th of July, Independence Day holiday. So at this time, uh, Jamil, if you could, let's see, while you press star eight, so let me just unmute your line here just a second. Okay, Jamil, are you there? Yes. Okay, Jamil, welcome to our program tonight. And thank you for being here and joining us for this edition of our of uh, our Monday Night Podcast. Um, well, I'd like to ask you first if you could tell us basically how you first became aware that you were being stalked. Okay, um, and I'm very honored to be speaking uh, tonight. Well, tonight for me, today for you, because I'm in Michigan, but uh, I had went through a series of conspiracy research that had went on for years, and it wasn't until the last couple of years that I did a bunch of interviews um, with celebrity, quasi-celebrity type figures in the conspiracy world, and thousands of people had heard these interviews, and little to my knowledge, I didn't know that the interviews were going to attract the attention of the secret societies in the world. And what happened was I had been, I ended up in Hollywood through the interviews I was doing. I was invited to meet somebody I did interviews with. And then as I got there, the secret societies that ran Hollywood, which they're, they're, they're swarmed there, the motion picture industry is filled with them, uh, they were observing me the whole time. They wanted to know, was I actually going to be able to bring down a certain level of deception um, in, the, in the things I was talking about? I was talking about Jonestown, uh, the Manson family, and many other subjects. And the powers in Hollywood were directly behind these subjects. And the story that the public has about these events is false. And the real story is something much different. And they knew that I knew a lot more than I was supposed to know. And so I was put in a life death situation. And it was it was a flip of the coin. And at the last second, for whatever reason, they decided to let me go. This was in Hollywood at Motel 6 off Whitley and Hollywood Boulevard. And I had seen the people watching me. I mean, everything was set up. I didn't know anything. It wasn't until the last second that I looked around and discovered there was something wrong, and every, people were placed in the right places. This is my life. This wasn't gang stock. This is a life death situation. At that point, I walked up to one of the men who was ringleading it and looked him in his face. He got on his cell phone and said something in code, and then after that, I felt a wave of energy disappear off me. He got in his car. He went outside, got in some car, and left, and then a lot of the people were still looking at me. I went back in my room, and the next day I left and came back to Michigan. They were going to kill me, but they decided not to for some reason. I guess they decided that I wasn't nearly the threat that they thought I was. But at that point, they had already shown me everything. I had already met some of the people in the secret societies. I knew where to find them, and I knew everything. But they said, well, he's not going to say anything. He knows better. He's going to be too scared. I got back to Michigan. I went back online and continued running my mouth. I didn't run my mouth as much as I could, but I said enough to keep, to get them even more pissed off. At that point, the gang stalking started. That's when they said, well, don't kill him. Put him in the gang stalking program. They put me in the gang stalking program, and I didn't know it was gang stalking. I thought this was a situation where these people were literally trying to kill me again. And then I, was hiding, I ended up hiding inside my mother's house for a month. And what happened was I eventually went outside. And I realized, well, if they wanted to get me, they would have gotten me. Why aren't they getting me? They're just following me. And then I realized it was gang stalking. And then it was very uncomfortable, and I came up with a formula. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to get through this no matter what. When I went to stores, everybody would be watching me. The store managers would be in on it. And I just started telling them my name, who I was. I told them I was famous. I did a bunch of interviews in Hollywood (laughs) and stuff. And I just rewrote my story. I just kept telling people I was famous. I kept giving them flyers. Everywhere I went, I did this over and over and over and over again to the point to where like 80 to 90% of the gang stalkers actually actually had smiles on their face when they saw me. People started looking forward to, to seeing me. You know, it became a joyful thing 
and it became like I felt like a little kid in a candy store. They even they like to use females. There's certain females I'm attracted to. They'll use those types of females, and they thought that would be a thing where, you know, the female they were paying would reject me. It turned into a thing where I enjoyed it. I started talking to females more and more and more and more, and they started using more attractive females. So I started talking to more attractive females more, giving them my phone number. Now I got all kinds of females I'm talking to. Um, they drug my food at a lot of places. Uh, my mother brought home a pizza that was drugged, and me and her got an argument about it. It was it was a really messed up situation. So I started eating more organic, more healthy. Um, everything they've managed to try to do to me has only made my life improve. You know, it, it's like my life before getting sucking was ten times worse than it is now. Now my life is ten times better. I actually owe it to the gang sucking program. The gang sucking program actually saved my life. I'm a much happier person, much more successful in everything I do. And, I mean, if I could take it all back, I wouldn't. I'm grateful that I got put in gang stalking. And, you know, I talk to people who've been in it for 30 years, and they say, you know, they, they tell me the same thing. They say, you know, I don't know what you did, but you found a loophole to make yourself better out of it. And so that's why I'm telling people is they can take this experience and they can use it to make them, their lives better. I mean, this program will actually improve your life. Wow. So it sounds like it has given you uh, a new level of confidence. So, Mel, what are you saying? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Ten times, um, ten times more confidence. You know, now when I go to the mall, there's a mall. I live in the city of Norton Shores, which basically is Muskegon, but there's a mall called the Lakes Mall. I go there, and I never kissed a female's hand in my life. And I go in there, and I walk up to the girl and start talking to them. I don't care if they're gang stalkers or not. I'll end up kissing their hand. I'll end up talking to them. I'll do everything I can to get their phone number. If I can't get their phone number, I'll give them a flyer with my phone number on it, telling them about my whole story about, you know, beating gang stock and stuff like that. And I mean, it's just, I, it's just amazing. I, I don't know. I can't put a, I can't put a label on it. It's just an amazing feeling. Wow. Uh, have you encountered other, uh, other target individuals uh, during this experience? Oh, no, I never – I oh, yeah, one. There was one younger female, and she said it had happened to her. Um, she was investigating corruption in the city she was in in North Carolina, and then she had to move to Michigan to get away from it. And so she – they put the gang stalking program on her for doing that. But since I put up my videos, I've had numerous people um, emailing me and calling me, and I've been able to help a lot of them now. Uh, there was one guy. They had him on, like, 14 different kinds of psychotic drugs anti-psychotic drugs, and he had to go see a therapist every day and stare into her eyes and tell her gang stalking wasn't real. Um, it became obvious to me they had an agenda to try to put him away in a hospital, maybe even try to, you know, lead him to suicide or, you know, who knows, when you're, when you're dealing with this, these kind of people, who knows what they're capable of. And I, I was able to convince him to stop taking the medication. He cut back by at least half on the medication. Um, he no longer goes to the therapist, and it's just improved his life. 110 percent i mean now he's actually go now he's actually walking around talking about filming the gang stalkers i mean he turned in he was scared to go outside and now everything's changed everybody i talked to they've been gaining uh, success off my story and it's like the hundred monkey effect when one person does it two people do it three people do it they're just having a snowball effect right now wow so um how would you explain your methods uh jamil could you kind of summarize what your methods are about well, the way I view it is gang stalking cannot operate in your life uh, if they cannot disconnect you from within. Everything they do is psychological, but it basically basically boils down to spiritual. They want you to be empty. They want you to be an empty person who is afraid all the time and doesn't have any answers. That's the type of person they wish to mold you into. If, I, if a fear crosses me, I immediately identify the fear and I face it no matter what. Even if it's death, I face it. I used to walk down the street at 3 in the morning, and the gang stalkers would drive at me. Literally, they would drive on the side of the road like they were going to hit me and kill me. And this is at 3 in the morning, and this is in Michigan. This is in the country where I'm walking, and I didn't care. I just kept walking straight. It was a life or death thing. They could have hit me. It could have been somebody who wasn't gang stalking who was just drunk. I took that risk. I faced that fear of death, and the person moved. One of the times, I actually walked further in front of the car to see what they would do, and they, and they moved further out the way. That helped me accomplish my fear of death. That helped me accomplish a lot of things subconsciously. Um, uh-huh. that, these, are, these are the methods I use. And, you know, people would be, sometimes people would stare at me, keep staring at me. And I go to areas, like I go to the hood, 
you know, I, I, go, I go to areas like the projects and stuff like that. I, I remember one time they drugged my food at Burger King because they were angry I was passing out flyers. And I left Burger King, and I went back to a neighborhood I'm very familiar with. You know, it's in the hood. And I'm sitting there. I got a jump rope. I'm on the jump rope passing out flyers, in, you know, in front of a crack house, telling people about how, how I beat gang stalking. I, I just do it anywhere. I, I don't care. I I think everybody in the gang stalking program has a certain level of spiritual protection over them anyway. And so that, that's been my method, just to keep facing that fear over and over and over again. And then I go into isolation. Uh, I, I'll take, I take three days off, go back out and face it for a couple of days, take three more days off, and it's to the point where now I can face it every single day. And, and I'm at the best level. They, the program uses sex against me now. They use women. Uh, they'll have my neighbor's wife wear real tight pants and stuff and come outside. I mean, I'm not trying to tell vulgar or whatever, but they got in their mind that's supposed to make me uncomfortable. I just look at them. I just enjoy it. And a lot, of, and now the women, a lot of the women are starting to enjoy me. They do it. <laughs> it's, and you know what I mean? It turned into something a lot better than I thought it would be. It's pretty exciting. Uh-huh. Wow. So, um, so have you, um, so have you had feedback from people that have tried your methods? Have have you had um, people call and email you about you know how it has changed their life or anything? Yeah, well, see, see, my method, see, the method that I use to face the fear is it, very versatile because each person that is being targeted within the gang stalking program, they're different people, and so the strategy that the program uses against them is different, and so on an individual level. On an individual level, my friend of mine, Steve, who's beating the program right now, they try so many different things against him that they never tried against me only because it's going to work against him. And I've been telling him how to do it, how to grind through it, how to face that fear. And he, they had him to the point where he was inside the house all the time afraid to come out. And I told him, man, get out of the house. Go anywhere. Go to the park. Go somewhere. And he, as he started leaving the house, people would mimic him in public. And I told him, face the mimickers, talk to them. And he started talking to his mimickers, and they start running away from him. He realized they're more afraid of him than he is of them. The people in the gang stalking program are actually more afraid of you than you are of them. The, wow. people, who work, the people who work for it. If, if you go, there's been a lot of times where they'll pick a guy who will look like he just got out of level four prison, and he'll be in his car looking at me. I walk up to him, tell him my name, tell him everything about me, tell him to Google me, and nine times out of ten, he looks more afraid than me. And some of the times I'll actually make friends with these people. Like, we'll shake hands and talk. And, you know, it, it's actually a thing where I, I'm creating a stronger bond with the gang stalkers than what the program has with them. They like me more than they like working for the program now. And, and that's the method I'm using is just being positive and facing the fear, being positive and facing the fear. And it'll work for you no matter what if you apply it. You just got to apply it. Look at what they use against you and apply it to that, and it'll work. Wow, it sounds like you have really uh, changed the environment around you. So that, you know, usually, like if someone is, is walking on the street and they're a victim and stuff, there's a lot of, you know, sometimes it's tension. Sometimes, you know, they try to do things to frighten a person. But it sounds like you have actually reversed that environment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had it. They've used the police on me. I was in Phoenix for a couple of weeks. They had the cops pull up on me and flash their lights at me. And I started, like, I started waving at the cops, and the cops actually started liking me. They were, they, were, they were expecting me to have some angry reaction or some, you know, quasi-violent reaction or pretend like I'm, you know, all tough and they can't do nothing. I, I just started waving at them and smiling at them. And then before my vacation was over, I mean, they, they were, like, laughing. It's like we were friends. It, even though they were still gang stalking me, there was no animosity. And this changed my relationship with the police. I respect the police now a lot more than I did before because through this, I realized they're just people like me. You yeah. Know? And, and then well, they tried – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, go ahead and finish what you were going to say. No, I was going to say they've tried to use gangbangers against me. And a lot of times the gangbangers would approach me. And a lot, I realized a lot of times the gangbangers would be more afraid than I was because they don't know who I am. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. And so they would they would approach me, and I would start talking to them. I would say, "Hey, did you know I was famous?" And they, they would they would sometimes they would laugh and say, what are you, "They would say, what do you mean you're famous?" I would say, "I went to Hollywood, did a bunch of interviews, and this happened and that happened." And you know they would they would get interested in it, 
and sometimes the people would be like, um, sometimes the individual, this was, this was on the West Coast, sometimes the, the gang member was like a crip, I'd be like, did you know crip, I like, I'd be like, did you know the uh, crips came out of the Black Panther Party and this and that, and I would start educating them on the background of whatever gang they were in through, through my experience of the research, and we would form a strong bond, and sometimes we'd trade phone numbers and end up talking later on. I would never talk to them about them gang stalking me, but we would build a friendship outside of the gang stalking. Has they have they ever shared like information uh, with you about you know who's stalking you or why or anything like that? Um, indirectly, yes. I never I never asked any of them. I, I never once asked anybody. Could they tell me who who paid them to stalk me or why they were doing it? But indirectly, people gave me clues. They would say, people would say things like, did you get yourself in trouble or something? And I would say, no, what are you talking about? And they wouldn't say anything back. Um, oh, uh-huh. they, but, but then I would tell them then I would tell them my story. I would tell them everything that happened to me, and then it became obvious to them that why they're being paid to follow me. But I, I didn't want it, to be honest with you, I, I've never once asked somebody directly, are you gang stalking me? I just, I've never done that. And to me, it's that. If, to me, if you do that, it's actually giving the gang stalking thing more power. It, it, mm-hmm. If you if you acknowledge the gang stalking program and you make it out to be more bigger and fearful than what it is, then it sort of takes more power of your relationship with the person. I never wanted to establish our relationship based around the gang stalking. I wanted to establish our relationship based around you know my story or their story and who they are. I, I never wanted to acknowledge the gang stalking program and, and give it any type of real power. Oh, I see. Well, that's a good strategy. Well, you know, um, there are a lot of people in the community that are very um, leery of the police because, you know, they feel that the police are part of the gang stalking and everything, and maybe some of them have been. So it sounds like you were able to change that dynamic by your um, just being, just approaching them and talking to them. Yeah, yeah, and, and, you know, that's so true. And because of my relationship with the conspiracy world, I had angered a lot of the fraternal orders. And the fraternal orders um, oftentimes are connected to the professional world, like the police and the medical field and stuff. And so it's sort of a quasi thing. Um, a lot of the a lot of the uh, local police departments, I think they look at me too full. They look at me like I'm in the gang stalking program. But they also look at me like, you know, this guy, uh, you know, ultimately he ran his mouth about, a lot of things that people don't know about police departments and things like that, and so it's a little bit it's a little bit complex. I get watched by two groups: I get watched by the gang stalking, and then I get watched still by the fraternal orders and secret societies. And so sometimes it's hard to tell where the where do the police fall in, and are they watching me specifically for the gang stalking program, or are these people more directly connected to the secret society? And that's not the police; that's every professional group. That's the hospitals. That's wherever I go, you know what I mean. Um, the mm-hmm. corporate world. I a lot of people might not believe this, but one of the groups I had offended were uh, actual real Nazis. After World War II, a group of Nazis had come into the Americas. Uh, it's known as mm-hmm. Project Paperclip. And I had right. angered these. I had angered these people, and so a lot of times there's second generation, third generation relatives of these Nazi families who came into America. And they seem to have been extremely agitated by the things I was talking about regarding them. And they watch me closely as well, along with the gang stalking program. So sometimes I don't know if this is a gang stalker or this is this one of the secret societies. I mean, it, it, it can go both ways. Okay. What about um, the electronic attacks? Uh, could, you ch- could you share with us um, your experiences with that? Um, the electronic attacks... The, the thing is that they have two or three different forms of it. Sometimes it'll be a thing where they want to heat you up. Like, a, you know, it's very, you feel like you're hot, like they heat you. Another time, I think it, it's some sort of um, attack on your consciousness. Like they try to mess with the way you think and the way you interpret information around you. Um, mm-hmm. I know they have attacks like radiation attacks where they can make you sick, um, kind of woozy, like you feel like you're going to pass out. And what what this made me do is start exercising. I, I, I exercise every day on a jump rope, and I've lost, you know, a lot of weight so far. Um, when I start doing the jump rope, I can only do it regular. Now I can do it on one foot. 
you know, on each foot, you know, I can run in place, I can do a bunch of stuff. And this has changed my cardiovascular system. This has changed everything about me, uh, the way I think. Everything's changed as I start exercising. And these attacks, when they do come, they're not nearly as powerful now. Something about mm-hmm. exercise, drinking a lot of water, exercising. Um, I don't mean to sound kind of vulgar, but I think sexual activity has a lot to do with it, too. People who are more less sexual, I think it can bother them more. I think the more sexual you are, you, you, you have a partner or whatever, I think that's healthy. I think that's very healthy. Like, I wasn't in, I wasn't talking to women very often since I've been talking to women more and exercising more. I mean, the electronic harassment, the effect of it has gone down a lot. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what's happening sometimes when it does happen. That's how potent my resistance has gotten to it. Okay. So it sounds like you have a very good routine. Actually, we had a question about that earlier, so I'm glad that you were able to reinforce that information. Right. Okay. Well, um, Jamil, thanks so much for sharing, you know, all of your experiences because uh, it sounds like you have a well-rounded program um, of defense, you know, against what they're doing. And um, this is something that we all can learn from. Um, There are people, especially electronic victims, that uh, are dealing with a lot of heavy, uh, heavy attacks. And these are some of the things that I think uh, what you've outlined here that might help some people that um, are having um, a difficult time right now. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say before I open the line, uh, lines to callers? Anything you uh, like? No, I just, I just, I just want to, um, I just want to, again, um, you know, encourage people just just to have a positive outlook and to be as healthy as they can. And you know, just to, if anybody ever wants, you know, wants to ask me anything, even after tonight, later on, there anybody's free to contact me. You know, um, and before that's all I wanted to say before you open the phone to callers. Okay. Well, if you'd like to give an email address or something, um, how people can contact you, that would be fine. And then. Um, you know, in case people are not able to get to their to their question, uh, we hope that uh, everyone will have a chance to, to speak. So, um, with well, this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, open the lines to the callers. We're talking with uh, Jamil Rawls, who has a number of videos on YouTube called How I Beat Gang Stalking. And he's been sharing with us some of the methods that he has used to basically overcome a lot of the fear, a lot of the anxiety, and uh, a, lot, a lot of the psychology that is associated with, with group stalking, and even uh, some of the electronics that are used against it. So if you'd like to ask questions of Jamil, you may start eight at this time as we begin our discussion. Hi, um, this is Nina. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hi, Derek. This is Nina. Um, I have some questions. Um, since I've been around this since 2009, um, um, <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out why we didn't get any forensics type of people because I'll just let I'll just put it to you somewhat straight. Um, they can infiltrate Vons, Walmart, Amazon you name it, the local restaurants, the stores. And uh, they've been poisoning, drugging my food. They've been doing stuff to my milk, making, you know, using animals. This is sophisticated. This is government. It's obvious. And I don't know why, even if I go to the hospital, I can't get anybody to come and collect this information because I've got, I've kept a lot of the food as evidence. And um, I mean, we've heard the story over and over and over and over and over again, but we need people that are going to actually, that's not the government, going to show what's going on. And it's looking, I have no other, other terminology for it, but it's kind of like an urban warfare. It's government, FBI. Everybody keeps claiming NSA, 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 and nobody else really talks about, I won't say them because they get really pissed off at me. And, you know, their favorite thing is always to, if not threaten you, threaten your family members. And... Um, I'm just wondering why we didn't do that. Um, I know it's very inclusive. They can infiltrate anything, everybody and everyone. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, ACLU, 
it doesn't matter. They use their badges. FBI will say, stand down. You've got to do this. They have the cops. Everybody knows about it. And then we get stuck with this. I mean, they have, yeah, and they even have gang members. So, I mean, they have, they'll have mafia. It doesn't matter who it is. They have them. So, okay. um, uh, what, is, what is your question? Uh, um, mostly, mostly, I think I'm upset because we never talked about it before. I've been around this since 2009, but we never had any experts. I can't get any experts because it will become government. They've, they've messed with my, like, they'll bug my Time Warner. It doesn't matter. I buy stuff from Amazon. They've totally screwed up. And they'll have, they'll have them or the government. It doesn't matter who they're, either one. They're inter- interchangeable. But, um, like when Dr. Hall talked about in his book how people's food, you should have had, we should have had experts that could not keep my fingers crossed, be a government infiltrator and collect the evidence so that we'd have something or someone. And um, I don't, I don't know why, but like ACLU is kind of, I don't know why. It, it just, it deters me because I know there's a shadow government and it's bugging the holy hell crap out of me. And we have to sit around here and play games with it. So, um, I mean, it's not just against us. It's everyone. So it doesn't matter what community. They have it all rigged. It's like a military system. And um, I don't know what else to do. I mean, except maybe tell people. I mean, you know, you can be positive to, positive to what degree depends on what they want to do to you, meaning who, mine have always been pretty much government. But, um, and I don't know. So really I, I, I really don't know of, of experts in this, uh, in this field of, of group stalking. Uh, no, 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 not the group years. talking. For the food, um, when your food is being tampered with, it's being drugged and everything else with it. I can't get well, anyone. Yeah, I, oh. I wish we did have experts uh, or people that we knew of that were experts. You know, I'd I'd have them on the on the show regularly, but I don't know of any. If you, if you do, please let me know. I but, don't. Uh, I can't. Mostly, my... We're mostly <laughs> having. See, this is why we have these conference calls because we're mostly having to rely upon ourselves and each other for information and support, et cetera, because mm-hmm. this is an area where there aren't uh, people that you can go to and have them fix it and have them tell you what to do. We are having to create that, at least at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, that's <clears throat> what, what this is all about. You know, the community has to help each other right now because we do not have uh, professional help designed for us, you know, right. that's basically why we're here for each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I know we have Dr. Stanager, but she kind of, she's limited and um, she doesn't come to people's houses and stuff like that. And not only that, I think she's being also attacked, whatever you want to call it, gang stalking, um, government organized gang stalking. I don't like to call it anything else because it just goes off into the fantasy land where they want to continuously put us into delusional and you know, and discredit us. Um, oh yeah, and it's just one of mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's one, but she doesn't come to the house. And if we could get more like her, I would be. I think this would be beneficial for all of us as a group. We can collect this, and also possibly some human rights organization that will actually that has legal abilities to stand up for us because we shouldn't be doing this all alone, and we cannot go to the government agencies because they are they are it. It's the MK Ultra. I mean, well, we all know. No, it's not entirely. It's not entirely the government. There's a lot of other groups involved in it now, which because is because they're which, contractors. Uh, contractors, mm-hmm. you know, underground criminal groups, uh, secret society, corporations, and so forth. Um, religious cults. A lot of groups. A lot of players are involved now besides the government, which. Enables, which enables us to go to city officials and say, well, look, this is what's happening. There are underground criminal groups. They are this type and this type and this type. It's not all government. But that allows the city to investigate our, our, this criminal activity. If we said it was all government, then they would say, hey, well, that's not our, that's not our jurisdiction. You'll have to go to the FBI or someplace. So, um, but fortunately, the, um, the criminal uh, the criminal element has diversified, so that enables us to seek help with city <laughs> leaders. Now, they are the ones who will listen to us, and they are in a, they are in a position to help us, and that's who we've mm-hmm. been talking to, and, um, and some of them will, will work with us. Um, you know, mm-hmm. the, the federal officials will not, 
They will listen to us all day. You can make appointments to see them any time of the of the day. Uh-huh. Um, but beyond uh, an initial visit, uh, they do nothing else. So uh, fortunately, there are other options, and we've been working uh-huh. with them. And we're on we're on the point of developing some type of protocol that will help GIs. So that's where we are with this issue. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're at a point now that we've not been in the past, and and hopefully over the next few weeks, the next few months, we will start to make some major uh, strides forward and help the eyes. But I'll keep everybody posted about that. Okay, we do need to move on. Um, okay, uh, anything else you want to say real quick? Oh, I couldn't hear you. Um, yeah, see, I have the FBI, and as soon as certain things happen, they make even my city councilmen, whoever, stand out. I have my ex-in-laws. I don't know if you remember them, but I'll allow you to recall that. And also, I started with the county sheriff's department, San Luis Obispo, who um, basically are doing, are doing the experimentation, even though I'm in L.A. County. And... So basically, I understand what you're saying federally. There are a bunch of loops, and they're just talking. And like you said, they'll talk all day long and do nothing. Um, but well, no, they won't talk. I, they will listen. They will listen. They listen. will not do any talking whatsoever. You will talk, mm-hmm. and they will listen, mm-hmm. and, you know, they will do nothing. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure, but um, they can also get hurt by the program. Um that's probably why that's why you have all the false flags like for instance in Oregon where there's Ron Wyden who's um the senator who's on uh I guess uh, the intelligence committee and then also talking about the secret laws and it, it, the the secret courts and stuff like that um so I I think that's part of it I don't know completely um because I don't know. And just to make a bottom line, because I don't want to come into a bunch of details, but our government has basically been taken away. It's hijacked. And um, they, you know, I don't okay. know what else well, to say. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, uh, we do have to kind of move along because we, we have a guest and there are people waiting to talk to him. Um, if you're just joining us, we're talking with uh, Jamil Rawls, who is uh, sharing with us his experience of beating gang stalking. And if you have questions for him, you may start eight on your phone as uh, uh, we continue our discussion. Uh, questions for Jamil. Hey, Jamil, I got a question for you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Hey, I, I used to live in Hollywood, California, in the Hollywood Hills, right up the street from Whitley and Hollywood Boulevard. I know that area very well. That's where my targeting started. And... Uh, yeah. Nobody really talks about it much, but you glanced over about the Hollywood Illuminati. Like, yeah. what, 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 what were you exposed to out there? Like, I believe that my targeting is similar. But what were uh, you like exposed well, to out there? When I, when I was doing my research, I was talking about the, a lot of the things that happened in the Royal Canyon area and the Mulholland Drive area in the '60s and the 1970s, and this had right. involved, this had involved a lot of the powers. Uh, that run the motion picture industry, and this wasn't that long ago. And so, you know, huh. 1960s and 70s really isn't that long ago. And so these people are still around, and the last thing they wanted was some guy in today's world to bring up all their business out for the world to see. And once they heard me talking about it, then they pursued me. And these are the people that actually, you know, run the motion in, interest, uh, motion picture industry. These are the people who put the president in the White House. I don't really feel comfortable mentioning you know, specifically who these people are at this point, right. you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to make myself any more out there with it. You know, if I was to start talking more about who these people specifically were in the organizations and all that stuff, it would put me in a very uncomfortable position more than I'm willing to deal with right now. I mean, gang stalking has been enough for me. Last thing I need is, is to get back in people's mix again, but I'll just say that these are the people who actually run the motion picture industry, you know? Right. Yeah, I mean, I've had experience with them, but, I mean, did you meet these guys, like, through a, a, a connection out there, or did you meet them at a party? Were you in their office? No, I, I met these pe- I met the people in uh, person. I, I physically met these people in person and saw them face-to-face, and they know who I am. You know, I know where to find them. If I want to, I could go speak to them directly right now. They know exactly, you know, who I am, and I know exactly who they are. 
and, you know, were very aware of each other. And, you know, they were very unhappy. With, with that, with, when I came back from Hollywood, I had said a little, I had said a lot more than they thought I would ever say, and they, they they became very unhappy with me, and that's why I got put in the gang stalking program. But do you have any electronic harassment besides the gang stalking? Oh yeah, yeah. In the winter time, I went through a lot of electronic harassment. Um, they were targeting me in the winter time like every single day, and I was staying in the house right. a lot. I wasn't leaving. And that's when I started going on long walks. I would take a walk for like four or five hours, six, seven hours, you know, at a time. Um, then I began waking up at three in the morning, and I'd end up walking 15, 20 miles. And I was a lot heavier at that time than I am now. And so it was tough, but I did it just to clear my mind. And, and I keep it going today. I still stay outside working out all day, you know, just to keep my just to keep my aura clean, my energy clean from the attack. You mentioned you were vegan. Am I wrong? No, no, I'm not vegan. I eat, I eat meat, but I just eat a lot more vegetables than I used to. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm really weak. I find I have chronic fatigue all the time, and a lot of nano they got inside me. It's really awful shit. Um, but it's interesting to hear your story. Sex, sex will help you. I'm serious. If you if you like me, like like me, I'm into like thicker women, like thicker built women. And the program discovered they discovered that I like that, and they started throwing all those women in my face. And then what it did yeah. is it made it just made it just turned me in like hypersexual. And I try to be with like a woman every single night, and it's helped me. That's changed everything for me. Sexual activity has helped me beat the program by at least fifty percent. I, can I mean, imagine. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I'm serious, man. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I totally believe it. I. Yeah, they. If, like I used to be hypersexual, and they took that away from me. Now it's like I haven't had sex in quite a while, and it's like so mundane. Ugh. Yeah, just, just just to hold a female and, and like touch her and kiss her and stuff like that, and the warmth and all that stuff. That I mean, that'll that'll you know the program. They want you to be alone. They want you to be empty. They want you to be afraid. You know, just just being around women and like kissing them and touching them, it'll it'll help you immensely. Do you deal with any V2K issues? Is the B two K is that the radiation or like um the voice of voice? So, oh. I you know what I I've, I've never experienced that. That's the that's the thing I'm, that I'm most interested in the in the, in the voice of all things because I've never heard a voice in my mind or anything like that. And I I've sat there and just paid attention to my thoughts and it's never been from any outside thing. But I meet people all the time who who have it going on. Yeah, it started like a year into this, or, or I don't know, I don't know. Whatever I got exposed to in Hollywood is different, I think, than yours, but pretty f- horrendous shit. Yeah, yeah but they, you know, they bring helicopters on me. I live next to the airport. You know how they use the lights on you in broad daylight? You can walk down the street and they'll have the cars with the headlights on. Yeah. Y- yeah, I, you know, I can go outside. But it'll, it'll, it, at times, they would have like twenty, thirty, forty cars come. And I started waving at the cars, blowing kisses at the girls in the cars. Then they would bring out the helicopters. They would bring out airplanes, and the airplanes would have lights on them. I mean, it got wow. to the point. Yeah, it got so crazy, man. I it, it just it became just funny. I had to laugh at it. It was so crazy. And you know, I, I've been through intense stuff. I've never had the voice of Paul, though. Did you don't deal with any depression issues? I did for a long time. I was very depressed in the winter time. I was extremely unhappy. And, and you said you, they put you on antipsychotic drugs or something, or your friend? Oh no, not me. I, I, I've never been on antipsychotic drugs. It was, it was another guy going named uh, Steve. He's going through gang stalking right now, and they had him on antipsychotic drugs, trying to make him believe he was delusional. He wasn't being gang stalked. And he yeah, they just, tried to do that with me. Yeah, he gets the voice. You got to talk to Steve, man. He, uh, I'll be able to. You should email me at Jamil Rawls versus Gangstalking at Gmail. I can hook you guys up to talk. He's going through the voice of Skull really tough right now, man. And um, you know, they told him he was crazy and everything, and and you know, they they basically were trying to put him away in a hospital. Yeah, I know how huh? that is. I I I told the doctors I was exposed to nanotechnology, and they put me away in the hospital. It's really yeah. sinister. The whole. The whole system is designed to be against you. Yeah, it, it, oh. and, the, and the thing is, is, a lot of people don't know why they're targeted. Like, I specifically know why I'm targeted. 
you know, but a lot of people uh, get targeted, and it seems like there's no real reason for why they're being targeted. That That's the thing that's bothered me. Right. I understand. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. It's crazy. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Oh, hello. Uh, hi. Question or comment? Yes, go ahead, please. No, I'm I'm good. Okay. Um, I have a question. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Yes. I have welcome. a question, Derek. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Barb. Welcome to the call. Hi. Um, Jamil, is that how you say it? Okay. I realize, you know, I definitely agree that exercise is good. It produces, you know, the good hormones and so the sexual activity and diet. And I do lots of vitamins and they help me. But here's my question. It's my experience that the more reactive I am, the worse the attacks feel. So here's, do you think it's possible that the fact that you've cut down on your anxiety and your fear, that you have actually made your attacks feel less powerful because of that? Yes. 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 Well, I, that's exactly correct. Um, the anxiety and the fear has went down tremendously. So the attacks feel like 10, they, they feel a tenth of what they, they're only a tenth of what they used to be. And what I do is I take I take back my own power from these people. If they're in a car, on the, they used to sit in the car on the corner all the time, I just walk up to the corner and talk to the people in the car. And it's, a lot of times they would pull off like they were scared. I took the power away from them. You know, they, they put people out there, they use people against me to make me afraid, and I don't want to, I walk up to them and directly face them and talk to them about it. And it's a situation now where I've taken so much power away from these people, it doesn't even bother me anymore. I, know I, I agree with that. I think that would has definitely, I do that in my own way, made the attacks less powerful, feel less powerful. Who knows if they're actually less powerful or hurting my body the same, but it feels less powerful. Okay. Right. Thanks. Okay. Well, thanks, Barb. Is that, do you have any further questions? Nope. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah the, the physical exercise, uh, as you were saying, uh, Jamil, you know, I have heard this from a number of other people that, you know, that do things like work out at the gym. Um, I haven't heard anyone say that, that uh, sexual activity was uh, helped them a lot, but I don't know. Uh, but anyway, a lot of physical exercise, physical um you know, workouts, you know, running, uh, even walking, uh, it it fortifies your system against these electronic attacks, from what I understand. Yes, I think, honestly, my personal feeling is that these attacks are meant to break down the family unit in America. Uh, I think a lot of this targeting has something to do with bloodlines. I think these people know a lot more about us than we think. They know us generate. They know who our ancestors were, and they know, you know, there's something within us that's attracting this. Um, besides just my research, just a general sense for everybody being attacked. And they want us, you know, we live in an era where people don't talk to people anymore. You know, there used to be a time where you'd go to the park and meet people and hang out. People don't do that anymore. And start, and then when you get gang stalked, it, it, just, it just enhances it, you know, times 100, and nobody's social anymore. It's breaking the family unit apart. It's breaking. This is gang stalking is breaking society apart. It's isolating individuals, and you know anything you can do that creates physical activity, like going up to somebody, just express your heart to that person, tell them how you really feel. I mean, I go. I I went up to this woman. I saw this woman's Foot Locker. She was really beautiful. I walked up to her. You know, I I told her specifically. I said the same power that created the universe is the same power within you. And then she started smiling. I never seen anybody smile like that. She was so happy. And no one ever t- communicates with people like that anymore. I mean, I just come up with, like, the craziest lines, but, I, you know, they're true. And I just talk to people, and I try to get a female and, you know, have physical contact with her and stuff. And as humans, we have to, you know, we're animals. We have to be around each other. We have to be touch people. We have to have uh, physical love and, and help and assistance. And without these things, there's no way we can get through gang stalking. I mean, we're we're you know we have to, we have to be emotionally involved with people, and they're trying to turn us into zombies, pretty much. You know, 
<laughs> well, that's true. I agree with that. Yeah, they are. They're trying to break down the social structure of society. And you're right, we are social beings, and they're trying to take that, you know, from us. That, you know, so having a social life is very important to an individual. Whether, um, you know, friends, you know, even strangers, you know, having a social life, you know, having an impromptu conversation, like you say, with, uh, with someone that you meet on the bus or, you know, in, on the street or something like that is uh, rejuvenating, basically, you know. So, you know, I agree with everything that you are doing there. So, yeah, can, I ask, can I ask you one more question? You made a comment about your feeling was it had something to do with bloodline. Can you can you expand on that? I know somebody that seems to think that German background has a lot to you know a lot of people who are targeted have a German background. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I I, I can see that being true because uh, you know the the German people have a, a, a Viking line. And the Vikings were one of the people that were extremely rebellious to the Vatican, to the Catholic Church. And so maybe there's something there where they feel that German people are more prone to being rebellious to the social structure. Basically, anything that's going against the New World Order, their agenda, their vision for humanity, anybody who's going to be a threat to that, they target. And they look at bloodlines. Some people are just more complacent. They're going to go along with it and not really notice anything different. You know, other people want to live a real humanity. And I think we're the people that want a real humanity. We don't want to live in some fake, fake plastic corporate world where we just sit there and, you know, zone out the television every night. We want a real life, and they know that. And so they're targeting us, and I think it has to do with genetics. I think genetics are heavily involved. Um, these people are involved in occult science. They're into some dark stuff. Um, the people who run the corporate world, the billionaires, they're deeply into spiritual stuff. They're not Christian, angelic, or good Muslim people or good Jewish people, these people are deeply involved in, in the dark, dark, dark stuff. And I'm not trying to give that any power. I'm not saying these people have any spiritual power over you. That's not what I'm saying. But their mindset is so anti-human that it, it, it's frightening. And for people like us who are, who are fully human, you know, there's something about us that, 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 that's terrifying them. And I, I do think it has to do with our genetics, our genes. And that has to do with spirituality. I, I can't. I don't know how to break it down. I haven't really studied it. I, I've just. This is from years of my conspiracy research, and from years of, um, you know, listening to different perspectives in the alternative research field, and then going through gang stalking. And I, it, it, there's something very terrifying about us to these people. Like we're we're a threat to what they're doing. They have this big agenda, and we're a threat to that. And. You know, it has. To, it looks to me like genetics and spirituality are are the key. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, you have an excellent um, strategy, uh, Jamil, and that it basically is the reverse of their strategy. And I think if more of us would adopt this program, we'd be a lot better off. Uh, let's see. More questions for uh, Jamil Rawls that we're talking with tonight. Let's see, someone from West Washington, someone from New York. Hi, questions, welcome to the call. Questions for Jamil Rawls. This is Washington, it's Lonnie. I came in late, but I heard uh, the last 30, 40 minutes. I'm going to ask Jamil, with sexually transmitted diseases notwithstanding, have you considered monogamy? Because you're talking about the uh, family unit. I just wondered, did any of that enter into your plans or your desire for life? I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understood the question correctly. You're, you're saying because of sexually transmitted diseases, um, what would I think about monogamy? I'm just saying that that might be a consider. There are a lot of considerations <laughs> for, that uh, speak well for monogamy. But I'm just wondering, do you not think you're exposing yourself every night to these women who they put in front of you as, uh, you know, it could be a danger? Well, well, I, see, I went, see, I'm 30 years old. You know, I, I'm a man. I went through five years of just sitting, you know, I live in my mother's house. I went through five years of never bringing any females here to my mother's house, just using the computer day in and day out, studying conspiracies. And that was like a gigantic big thing that I went through. And then when I got to gang stalking, they started putting women in front of me. And I broke my shell and, and really started talking to females. 
and I'm now I'm enjoying it so much. I mean, I just love it. I just love talking to different women, and <laughs> it's you know what I mean because I didn't have it before. So many years I didn't have it, and so now I I just feel you know excited. I feel like a kid in a candy store. Well, I, I'm, as a woman, I'm glad you like women because you know we like to be liked. But uh, just be careful, and you might consider um, there's some good rules that God laid out for us, and they work well if society would stay with them. If society does not stay with what God laid out for us, but just be very careful because there's a lot of danger out there, especially if they're putting the women in front of you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, you know, and you're so <laughs> right. You know, I, I, I believe people should keep themselves protect it from disease as much as possible and I, I'm so thankful for that advice you gave me. You're, you're so right, you know. I mean I'm enjoying myself but I'm not trying to overindulge and I I appreciate that. Okay. I'm, be careful. That, that that could become a trap for you, Chamio. That's you know, you do need to kind of think about that. Right. Okay, um a question's for Jamil. Can't wait to see how you feel something you've worked for your whole life. Or something okay. You've worked for. Do you have a question or comment? Are you talking to us? You're told, fuck you, it's mine. Okay, looks like that's where that's coming from. Okay. Um, I didn't even hear what he said. I just heard him say, fuck something. At the, oh, excuse my language. I heard him swear at the end. And so. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he was talking about either. Okay, um, more questions for Jamil Rolf. Uh If you do, uh, star eight on your phone to join a discussion. Jamil has, um, has created a number of videos on YouTube uh, entitled I Beat Gang Stalking and How You Can Beat Gang Stalking, and he's here to share uh, his tips with the community tonight. And uh, this is our guest for this evening. If you have any questions for Jamil, Star eight is the request to talk feature on your on your telephone, and I can unmute your line. You can talk to Jamil. Okay. Any further questions or comments for Jamil at this time? Okay. Someone from Minnesota has a question or comment. Hi. We're talking with Jamil Ross. Have a question or comment? Yeah. Hi, Derek. This is Mike. Listen. So, Jamil. When when you get like mobbed on the street or what do you call it theatrics or when they you know come around you, what, what do you what do you do? When the when the gang stalkers come around me, what do I do? Yeah, I just start talking to them. I I tell them my name is Jamil Rawls. I'm famous, only person in the world to ever be gang stalking. I went to Hollywood, did a bunch of interviews, got set up to be killed. Beat that. Google me. I just got like a routine I do, and depending on how the person looks or whatever. I'll say different types of stuff. I'll give them my phone number. I just embrace them. Like, I'm not afraid to embrace anybody. You know, there's nobody I'm afraid. I'm not afraid of anybody. Uh, the most no, no, no. I agree with you. I, I, I beat mine, too. It's been, like, a lot less anyway. Because right. I, I just, I, if I seen one on the side of the road and I knew they were a perp, I'd pull over and help them. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it's like I just act like I don't even care anymore you know, about what they're trying to do. And it kind of just eased all off. But I was wondering how you had done that because they, I don't get the street theater anymore. Now it's just more of a, a try. They try to gaslight occasionally and that doesn't work. Um, but I, I think I watched two of your YouTube videos. Yeah. You said something about you only surrounded yourself with successful people. Yeah, yeah. I, I even even right now the people who are being targeted, there's a guy named Sid Jackson. He's like a he's a, he, man. He's an extremely talented martial artist, and right now he's covertly having his food drugged um, to keep him from competing in martial arts. I mean, he's extremely successful. You know, I, I'm in contact with him right now. Um, anybody I can talk to, I get a lot of emails from people who still look at my research, and some of them are doctors, some of them are lawyers and stuff that want to talk to me privately. I think once you place yourself around a circle of success, um, it, it, it motivates you to be better. You know, you don't, I don't go to people. I know people who sit around and smoke weed all day and drink beer all day. I don't want to be around those people. I want to be around people who are trying to, you know, going, going to college, people who are trying to excel in life, people who are going to keep me committed to being a better person. 
you know, I, I don't I don't like to be around people who who don't have a plan. Okay. I like that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Uh, more comments for Jamil? Questions? Okay. Um, it looks like we're wrapping up this uh, this portion of our, our call for this evening. And to me, I just want to say thanks very much for joining us. And it's been very informative. And I'm sure that uh, those who are listening have gotten some ideas for their own situation. So I appreciate your being here and sharing with us tonight. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to say I don't have anything that there's, I don't really have anything going for me that there's that somebody else can't do. Anything I'm doing, anybody else can do. You know, I'm I'm just a very simple person that lives so, in Michigan that that got to I where I got to where I'm I'm doctor, but I There's nothing miraculous about me. I'm just an average person like anybody else. Okay. Uh, well, great. Well, we all have things that we can share with the community, and we are here to learn from each other. Um, we basically are all we have at the moment. So, And uh, your tips are very valid, and um, these are things that, um, that, we, that we all can learn from in terms of uh, dealing with our stalk, our stalk, uh, the stalkers, basically. And... Um, it's given me some things to think about in terms of how I react to what they do and stuff like that. So I appreciate, you know, all of your videos, um, all of the, um, the advice and the tactics that you've shared with us tonight. Very helpful, I believe. So um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Jamil, and please uh, come back in and be with us during our community. And uh, we can still learn a lot from you. So I, I appreciate uh, all everything that you're doing. Oh, yeah. And I, I thank you so much. And I'll definitely stick with it and, and keep in touch with you guys. And hopefully I can come and listen uh, next week when you do it. Or, okay. um, you, you know, anything else you guys are doing, I like to stay associated and, and be in contact and support and help in any way I can. Okay. That would be great. Okay. Um We've been talking with Jamil Ross uh, from, uh, from Muskegon, Michigan, and he's been explaining to us his methods for how he beat gang stalking and we appreciate his information and his tactics uh, that he shared with us tonight. Uh, so at this time, um, we'd like to, uh, to segue uh, now into general topics. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything concerning your targeting, feel free at this time to start eight on your phone as we continue our discussion. I also like to wish everyone a happy uh, Independence Day. This is the 4th of July, and uh, I think it's ironic that we're talking about ways that we can become free of the gang stalking tonight. Uh, I think it's a very appropriate topic for uh, the 4th of July Independence Day. So um, I hope that everyone had an enjoyable holiday today, and um, um, and I would say that I did. It was enjoyable. Um, got to do some walking and I didn't encounter any stalkers, um, at least not directly. Uh, but it was an, an enjoyable day today. So if anyone would like to share what they did on the holiday, hopefully you had a pleasant one. Uh, feel free at this time to start eight on your phone. Okay, someone from Massachusetts. Uh, welcome to the call. Do you have a question? Or comment? No, this is Brenda Derrick. I just, I just oh, work. Hi, Brenda. Hi, welcome to the call. Thank you. I just work and enjoyed my guest, which was very good to 
today. We didn't have many reservations, but it was a quiet day. uh, We're not understanding you. Could you repeat that, please? Can you hear me? We can hear you, but you were a little bit uh, muffled. Could you repeat that, please? No, I just wanted to say that um, I had a very kind of quiet holiday um, working. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Glad you had a quiet day today. I hope everyone else did as well. I uh, haven't had any emergency calls today or calls, you know, in distress. It's been rather quiet here on the front. You know what I would do is simply do a little research, find out what they're using on you, and just reflect it right back at them and wait until you hear them shit in your pants. That slows them down a little bit. I I found that to be very useful. I don't know if I could do that. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, This is Ann. Is Jamil still there? Like, I would like to get his number. Is he still there? Uh, He's not. I think Jamil has hung up already. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. I can, um, why don't you call me and do uh, you have my number? Yeah, five, well, no, actually, 513, how is it again? 568-1635. Okay, thanks, Dirk. Okay. Oh, well, Derek, you know, I talked to um, this guy in a restaurant, and he had worked, he was retired, he had worked in military for, I guess, his whole life in intelligence, and so when I ran the usual list that makes most people's eyes glaze over, like, you know, V2K and remote neural monitoring, he knew them all, and I asked him, you know, is it government or is it criminals, and he said both. And he said they are chipping babies now. And um, he said he used to be, he said when you work for intelligence like that, like he can speak three different languages, but he knows all about the weapons and gang stalking. And he said um, when you work in that department, he says, I used to be part of the military industrial complex. I used to have that attitude that all this is okay to do to people. And he said, but then I I just kind of woke up and realized this is horrible. But he said he could never let on while he was working. And I said, you know, because they'll hurt you. And he just kind of nodded slightly, like, you know, something or throw him out or, you know, do something to him. But um, I, I know it's not saying much, but he, somehow he knows they're chipping babies. I don't know where or who's doing it, but he said they're doing it. But I'm going to try uh-huh. to talk to him more. I've never talked to anyone so informed before. You know, he, yeah, knew, he knew all about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, he sounds very well informed. And that's, you know, he's, he's correct uh, in what he's saying. And, uh, that, it's, that it's both. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's both, um, you know, government and other groups. It may have started out in the government, but it has now uh, filtered out to many other groups and uh, corporations and uh, drug groups and sex sex rings, all kinds of groups are involved with it now. Uh, Anything that's underground and that's uh, illegal, you know, those types of groups, you know, they have access to this technology. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to see him again at this little breakfast joint so I could get more information out of him. But he's he's just like, oh, he was kind of like almost bored with it. He goes, oh, like I'd mentioned certain things. He'd say, oh, they've been doing that for so long. They've been doing that for so mm-hmm. long. And so... Well, they have. And 
you know, from what I understand, they might be even uh, phasing out the chips for nanoparticles. Uh, as uh-huh. long as they were microchips, there was a possibility of, of um, these uh, objects being detected and removed. But with the nanoparticles, that's nearly impossible. Yeah, yeah. Scary. But if I can get more information out of him, I'll let you guys know. Eric. He's he's real nice guy. Well, invite him to the call, even. You know, we'd be glad to Yeah, I was, I was thinking of it. His name is Warren. About, what's his name? Who are you talking Warren. about? Warren. This guy named Warren, he, you know, um, he had a veteran's hat on, and it said Navy. And I said, oh, in you know, where did you work? In what department? And he said, intelligence. Well, you know, you have my attention immediately. And, you know, he could speak three different languages, and I guess he, like some of the very bad political presidents around the world, he knew their languages, and um, he um, he just knew everything I said, you know, it was almost boring to him when I talked about organized stalking, I said B2K, remote neural monitoring, and, but he did say himself that he used to be, like, compliant, and once he said he kind of woke up, he still realized that working for the military, he had to pretend that what they're doing is okay. He knew it would be dangerous to speak out against them or do anything against them. So I just oh, wow. can't wait. That sounds great. Is he on Facebook or does he have a website or anything? No, I just I just met him at a restaurant, a, a breakfast thing, and uh, – but he goes there a lot, and so I heard, so I'm going to, you know, the next time I'm just going to try to nab him. And, you know, maybe I could get him to come on the call. That would be fabulous. Um, he's yeah, very, that would be great. Very you nice. know, these people, yeah. they have an obligation to their fellow man to speak up and to tell what they know. And a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines right now. A lot of people like the Warren you mentioned, uh, you know, I come across them all, all the time, and they all have – very valuable pieces to the puzzle, but they're all scared because they're isolated. They think, you know, they'll be picked off like the lone gazelle by these hyenas running this program. But if they all stood up at the same time, if they all stepped forward at once, you know, even if 50 of them, even if 20 of them, even if 10 of them just got together and came forward at the same time and said the same thing, uh, it it would make a tidal wave. It would destroy the power elite thugs that are running this uh, illegal torture and subjugation program on us. Yeah, I mean that's one of the big ist weakest things that we have is that anything in numbers calling John McCain 50 people calling anything and you know like you said it's very important. Uh but I'll do my best to get this guy and like I have questions myself like why and you know I cuz it's just you know how it is when you try to tell other people about this stuff. They're just like, oh, boy. You know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, to have somebody who knows is, is was very different. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's I'll, so many ways to go about it. You just got to um, pick and choose. You know, you got to get an elevator speech, and then uh, we've got, you know, mountains of supporting evidence, uh, you know. Uh, so yeah, people, yeah. Uh, but numbers, numbers is very important. Like you said, if yeah, we, we need experts, you know, we need military veterans, we need psychologists, we need psychiatrists, we need doctors, we need uh, all those people with credentials stepping forward at the same time because they won't yeah. uh, be called crazy if they do it in uh, in a large group. Right. Well, yeah, and, we don't we don't encounter those people very often. However, if they were to come together as a group. Uh, and do something similar that uh, Stephen Greer did in 2001, uh, a disclosure project, a uh, conference, uh, press conference, um, or just coming together and, you know, in any type of conference setting and sharing the information that they have, I think that will be vital for the group. It's just that we so rarely encounter these individuals. So um, if you can bring him to uh, the sure. conference I'll, call, I'll, that would be great. If you can encounter him yeah. again, that would be uh, that'd be fantastic. So yeah, I'm gonna go there every day and try to, you know, 
see him again. Um, his whole family is military, and, you know, they're pissed about things like his sister was there and her husband I fought in, I can't remember which war, but, you know, when he got back, he was treated so poorly, so terrible, and um, she couldn't get treatment for some reason, um, him being a veteran, and then he died. And then, like, a year later, they said, oh, we can get him the help now, and he was already dead for a year. And so they're, mm-hmm. they're pissed. They're, they're just regular people, uh, and they were pissed about it, you know, so. Mm. Wow. I'll do everything I can. I'll do my best. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, we are, we have segued officially into general topics. If you have a question or comment about anything, feel free at this time to start in on your phone. Um, and Spencer, welcome to the call. Hey, thanks, Derek. I joined just now. Did y'all have a speaker on tonight? Well, yes, we did, and I uh, I wish that you um, had heard uh, had heard him because he had some very interesting things to say. Um, Great. Yeah, I'll listen to the recording off. for sure. Um, he was talking about what well, his name was Jamil Rawls, and he lives in Michigan. Lives in Michigan, and uh, he was sharing with the group about how he beat gang stalking and uh, described some of his tactics. Which, uh, if everyone you know were to employ these these uh, tactics with their stalkers, it would pretty much um, uh, really uh, wipe out the, the gang stalking program because it is so proactive. And um, the thing about gang stalking is it plays on. Uh, let's see, how can I put this? It plays on our ingrained and unspoken societal norms that uh, that one you don't you don't talk to strangers, and uh, especially those that you come to understand are lurking about trying to cause you harm. So um, they play on people's fears of these individuals that uh, are unknown to them. And uh, he basically kind of broke the fear barrier and went up to them and started talking to them. This struck up conversation. Uh, And he does that everywhere he goes. Um, And what that does is that um, that eliminates the fear and uh, he basically makes friends with these people. He talks to police that drive by and um, are stalking him. And basically, uh, he makes no differentiation between stalkers and regular people. And uh, it has definitely changed his outlook on his stalking situation. And these are things that uh, we can all learn from. So, um, but anyway, uh, for those that have severe stalking issues, I think this is a very important uh, conference call. Yeah, that's a good strategy. You've got to remember that we have a constitution in this country and we have human rights on this planet. And uh, no matter uh, what they say or what they do, you know, you're you're the good guy here. You know, if someone's committing a crime against you, no matter what their excuse is, you're the good guy. So, you know, handle yourself and handle the situation like you're the good guy. And, uh, you know, keep your composure and, you know, take these tactics that, that that guy is talking about and approaching them and, you know, being proactive and standing up for yourself. So I like that. That sounds good. Oh, yeah. Uh, be sure to listen to the recording of this. I think you would uh, find it interesting. Um, hey, Derek. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. This is Wes from Washington. I uh, want to speak in favor of Jamil's tactics. I was constantly being uh, followed by somebody at work who was sent in by somebody else who was being paid to uh, mess with me. And I got his first name on one occasion. The second name, second time or third time, I asked him what his last name was. And I said, oh, hey, uh, you just reminded me of somebody I know. 
And so he gave me his last name, and I said, well, you remind me of a certain number, certain person with the last name of Smith, for example. And ever since then, I've never seen him again. And then uh, I confronted a neighbor's son who was uh, in on some obscene knocking and sleep deprivation. Those are my perps. And um, uh, okay, um, I'm muting some people to try to find where this noise is. So, uh, if you mute it, just hold on. I'll I'll mute you if there's no, you know, unless there's noise coming from your line. Okay, Deborah, are you still there? Yeah, this is Western Washington, and I just wanted to say that. I confronted my neighbor's son after he and all of his friends were knocking on my door at all times of the night. And I just asked him a general question. And um, after that, I never had the knocking extent that I had been experiencing, which was as many as six times a night. Really? Wow. Yeah. So... I think that um, my way of friendly confrontation in the first case was very helpful. And in the second case, I just confronted a young kid. He told his parents, who are helicopter parents, and they just told him to cut it out. But I still have to deal with his parents, who are, um, I believe, the uh, cause of all my issues. Right. Well, there, there there are many aspects to the stalking, that's for sure. Yeah, and so I just want to say my first approach was to, hey, how you doing? My name's Deborah. What's your name? And then the second time was, what's your last name? And then I go, well, okay, you remind me of somebody I know. Uh, do you know this person? And with that, I never heard from them again. Okay. Well, um, it's important that we share tactics, and that's how we learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Well, um, thanks for sharing that, Deborah. Thank you. Okay. Um, just to meet somebody from Arizona, if you have a question or comment. Oh, no, that's me, Derek. I... Um, oh, I um, see. Yeah, I I just wanted to be able to speak, but I I can't think of anything to say right at the moment. Oh, but I okay. I think his I think his tactics are good. I I I think that's a positive way to do it. Um, you know, in my case, you know, I still have to be on guard. I I've gotten so many car attacks that you 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 just have to. Be on guard, but generally speaking, I I like what Jamil his his tactics. Um, it, okay, it, it does get rid of that fear. Sure. Have you have you seen uh, his videos? Um, no, I haven't. But I've 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 read those titles. I've read those titles. I just there's so much I want to research now. Um, like because I I'm getting remote neural monitoring. I'm getting mind reading, and they're making it clear that they can read my mind. So right now I'm looking for um, shield shielding. And so somebody said, you know, to wear a copper band around your head. So I bought one. And um, But, you know, I, I can't tell because it, they're not making it clear whether it's working or not. And, I, you know, they've just in the past week made it absolutely clear that they're reading my mind. So, uh, yeah, they've had that ability for quite a while. Yeah, it's a bummer, man. Cause, see, I I put a combination lock on my house. That that didn't stop them. It was a piece of cake, and you know, lot you know to get into my house. And I thought, oh, that'll stop them. You know, no, they they've made it clear that 
you know, in, in many other things, whatever I'm thinking about, they'll have somebody come up and talk to me about it or what it like I was stretching my back and I go to a store and this lady says, um, does the weather make your back, um, you know, hurt? And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, so they're really, really um, laying it on um, thick. They kind of gradually did it, but now I'm totally aware. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They, they, they've had that ability for quite, I mean, I, I first noticed it in the 80s. Yeah. And see, they... <laughs> I can I can look back now and and now I know they had it then, but you know I would just say hey look at like that happened I, I was noticing this and you know and, and then this happened and I thought God well somebody must have been watching me or but they I would agree they've had this on me a long time they just made it clear for whatever reason they want you to know uh, but they didn't like make it blatantly clear back then, but I can tell now that they've been mind reading a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, When it first started, you know, they did things to flaunt it just to let, just to let me know that they had this, this uh, machine or technology and, um, you know, it it could pick up everything, the, the slightest thoughts, innermost thought that uh, you don't even think about, you'd be able to, you know, that they heard that. Yeah, and now I'm getting weird dreams. And I've been gang stalked for 40 years, and they're kind of increasing the dream weirdness and intrusion, I guess. Oh, well, yeah, they see all those as well, and uh, they flaunt that information. Yeah. And... And they even, uh, there is dream manipulation. I'm not sure to what extent, but there is that as well. Yeah. But you're right. They can, you know, like they talked about this one little thought I had. And, you know, that just was a slam dunk for me. There's just no question. Kind of a bummer. Um, I I still I still agree with um, Jamil. Generally speaking, it's just in my case, they they just get so dangerous with their cars. You know, you kind of you have to keep your eyes open at the same time. Well, yeah, you do have to be careful with them because uh, they look for you to be careless uh, sometimes, and uh, that's all it takes. It just yeah. depends. You just have to be on your P's and Q's. Yep. Um, I was wondering, um, Spencer, have you, um, are you there? Yes, hello. Okay. Um, have you heard from um, the events in Poland today? How was the, um, how was the protest? Yeah, okay. Um, Well, um, I haven't gotten the exact tally, but I did hear from Tomas, who is one of the organizers with uh, 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 StopZET.org, the the Polish TI group, that the mainstream media, like the, the Polish equivalent of CNN, came out to the event, and he posted a link to the video. And I, I made a link to that on my uh, profile page uh, where they uh, interviewed some of the targeted individuals and displayed some of their signs regarding the Poland mm-hmm. protest. So uh, I would say that's positive. Uh, I haven't gotten my translator to give me an English uh, transcript yet, but uh, based on the footage and based on uh, Tomas's, uh mood, it seemed like it was a, a positive experience. And you can... You can see the video yourself um, either through stopzet.org or on my Facebook profile, Spencer Carter. So um, I'm not sure the exact number of people that came out yet, but um, as I said, you know, the CNN of Poland came out and uh, uh, interviewed a lot of the targeted individuals and uh, did about a, a two minute and 30 second segment on the, um, on the protest. So I'd say thumbs up. Okay, we'll see what happens with that. 
Yeah, and uh, we have uh, the NATO, the Worldwide NATO Summit, coming to Warsaw, Poland as well uh, from June 8th, or I mean th- from uh, July 8th to uh, July, or through July 9th. So uh, I think they're planning one or two more demonstrations because all the world leaders from every country will be in uh, Poland uh, this weekend discussing uh, military affairs affecting the planet. And as we all know, this is, uh, you know, this technology that's being used to subjugate us is derives from the military, derives from their shell contractors. And um, we, the more pressure we can put on them, to address these abuses of this technology, uh, the better for all of us. So I think there'll be uh, more protests and more demonstrations to come in Poland in the uh, next couple of days. Okay, excellent. Yeah, it's very good. Okay, thanks for sharing that, Spencer. Hey, and Derek, back to the uh, mm-hmm. gang stalking top topic. Have y'all uh, watched any of uh, uh, Webster Tarpley's uh, YouTube videos? Uh, no, I haven't. That's a good idea. <laughs> he just uh, posted a couple from the uh, speeches he gave at the forum. Uh, you can oh, find okay. it by searching COINTELPRO2016. I found about I found out about this from Todd Giffen, and uh-huh. um, oh, he's a, a um, he's a Princeton PhD who uh, specializes in political science. Very smart, respected, mainstream academic who who verifies that gang stalking is real. And he gives, you know, in his speech, he gives the historical basis for it, the, the history of it, how it came about. He, he tells about its roots in COINTELPRO here in the U.S. and its systematic development in uh, spy colleges of East Germany under their name of Der Zetzung. And uh, he does a really good job just confirming that it's real. And this is a Princeton PhD saying this. And, he, you know, he talks about how it's modeled on just the spy network that the Soviet propaganda artists and the Soviet KGB boss, uh, bosses uh, created throughout the uh, Cold War era. We basically adopted that system. The, the intelligence agencies in the U.S. basically modeled this whole targeted individual program off of the, uh, the Soviet spy networks that came about in the uh, Cold War area. A Cold War era. Okay, does he call this um, uh, group stalking or gang stalking? And uh, does he use terms like target individual, that kind of thing? He he defines it. Every word he uses to describe the victims of what he calls COINTELPRO 2016 matches the words we would use to de- define a targeted individual. So, oh, I you know, okay. he, oh. he, he has been a victim of electromagnetic harassment and torture. So, you know, as we all know, it's hard to grasp that aspect of this subjugation program if you haven't been uh, tortured with the electromagnetic aspect of it. But he he's, from what I can tell, he's experienced the, uh, gang stalking side of it, and his research focuses on that, and he calls it COINTELPRO, which is basically I'm what talking. it is. Yeah, it, COINTELPRO 2016. That's if you study that stuff, that's basically the scientific name for what's going on with us during the gang stalking. This is just an evolved version of it. It's even a you could even call what's going on with us a high tech version of COINTELPRO. They have electromagnetic weaponry at their disposal. So now, you know, we have this Princeton PhD, you know, confirming everything we say is real, that it's rooted in history, that it's rooted in the, the court records. And, uh, you know, get on YouTube and Google it, uh, COINTELPRO 2016 by Webster Tarpley of Princeton PhD. Uh, you know, we're, it, it's just another good stepping stone, another good piece of ammunition to use in our arsenal. 
Well, it sounds interesting. I would like to uh, have a listen to that. Um, yeah, he would call it Call Intel Pro, which is the FBI's program uh, that they launched against activists. So, um, and that's uh, it's something that um, that a lot of people do do know about already. Um, the FBI's program. What they may not be aware of, uh, many of these activists is that this program is being rolled out to um, the general public, you know, just um, the, the regular citizen. And, um, and it's kind of uh, networking, um, you know, it's kind of you know, spreading, you know, nationwide. You know, it's, it's thousands and thousands of people, whether they are activists or not, so I think that's the important thing that they need to realize, and maybe um, uh, after Todd and uh, Dr. Uh, Farber's appearance, maybe some of them do have that understanding now, which is important because this group, uh, this, this, uh, these alliances that they are making there with these uh, activists will be very important in terms of um, getting this information to the general public because these are the major progressive groups and they would not flinch when they hear our information that the general public is also being targeted with these same tactics and with mind control technologies. They would not flinch. They, they would, you know, receive that information. And that's basically what Todd shared with us, that they were very receptive. So, um, and the same was true when uh, some years ago, when um, the uh, the Occupy movement started, uh, many of our uh, members went out to uh, uh, to also protest and and occupy along with the uh, the occupiers, and shared our information with them. They, you know, they were very receptive, uh, and some of them were familiar with. Uh, these uh, with uh, the group stalking with the electronic uh, attacks and those that weren't they said oh okay well we will look into this you know so either way they were fine so uh, this is a very receptive audience and um, in that particular setting um, they received um, they wrote they would be very receptive to the information because it it does not cost them anything. It would not jeopardize anything for them to uh, have that information and to maybe act on it as a community. Um, if we were to approach any one of those organizations with this information, which we have many of them, um, they would tell us that there's nothing that they could do. Um, like the, um, the, uh, the uh, gosh, what is the name of that group? Um, let's see. It's something. It's something about the uh, the fence. Um, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. But uh, the ACLU and all of the leftist groups um, that that help society, uh, those that were represented there, uh, many of them we've been to already, and you know, seeking help. And um, and individually, they will tell us that they can't help us. But collectively, they will stand with us and and would you know join together to help us. So um, hopefully we can you know uh, be present at more of these conferences, and so that so that together uh, the leftists, the progressives, can make a stand in regards to this issue. So. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I uh, will be glad to have a look at that, and, you know, and uh, look at those videos, and hopefully, um, she uh, can join with us and support our efforts at this closure. So we'll see. You know, hopefully, and you know, sometime in the near future, you know, all these groups will join with us to um, to publicize this issue. Oh, um, hi, Derek. Oh hey, hey Cassandra, you have a question or comment? Well yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to remain anonymous and you just called my name. Oh okay. oh. <laughs> oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well um I will I will not call your name, but I will <laughs> if you don't want me to. 
Um, <laughs> let's see. How, how did you? Maybe I'll okay. Tell you what, Cassandra. Uh, maybe in a couple of hours, when nobody has, everyone has forgotten all about that you were here. I'll make your announcement, and no one will be the wiser. Okay. Well. I, <laughs> okay. I, I didn't I didn't dial in until nine twenty five mm-hmm. and hoping that I did not miss what we talked about earlier if you have bought it up. Um, well I am glad that you reminded me because um I had it actually slipped uh my mind. But since you um all you had to do was was uh say that you were here and um and maybe I could have made this announcement without anyone knowing, but um, but anyway, um, uh, you know I'll do whatever you want me to do. Um, well, can you just um, put it out there as delicately as possible? Oh, okay, Cassandra. Just you know, just uh, well. Anyway, it, it'll be okay. Okay. All right. So basically, um, what uh, we're talking about here is um, uh, Cassandra needs some help with something. And uh, for those of you that uh, are dealing with uh, rape issues, um, Cassandra would like some feedback uh, from you in terms of um, how the stalkers. Um, what the what the attacks were like, basically. And uh, for those of you that are dealing with those issues, if you could share with Cassandra, uh, particularly if there were um, multiple individuals involved, uh, she would like to hear from you because she is, um, although this has not happened to her, uh, she has been placed in a position to where she feels like it could happen to her, and she would like some guidance. So um, if those of you um, have had uh, uh, an experience with this in this particular area, if you could start age, um, or if you want to give me a call, um, if you'd like to remain remain anonymous, you can give me a call, and I can pass your information on to Cassandra because she needs some support at this particular time. Um, her stalkers, they may be, you know, just trying to frighten her, uh, but she feels very threatened uh, with this particular situation at this particular time. So um, if anyone has any suggestions for her, uh, feel, please feel free at this time to start eight. My advice on psychosexual torture is to remember, you know, that it's just a a remote directed energy weapon assault. That's all it is, you know, whether they're stimulating your private areas or what. It's just a directed energy weapon assault. You know, this is something that she feels – I think she feels that they are trying to prepare her for, like, some type of a physical – Assault. So, she, yeah, but you've got you can't you can't no. let your mind go that way. You can't no. you can't let them defeat you mentally. Okay. I mean, they're uh, creating physical sensations in your body, and they're real, and it feels like you're being raped with the directed energy weapon they they're hitting you with. But that's all it is. It's just electromagnetic weaponry. So you've got to stay mentally strong and just tell yourself that these okay. these Spencer. ridiculous. Spencer, Spencer. Yeah. Um, she is talking about. Um, she feels that these are going to be actual, you know, men coming forward somewhere. Uh, that's what's frightening her. Oh, okay. Uh, have, so there, that's part of their threats. Um, uh, interesting. Um, well, mm-hmm. that's when you just have to rely on, you know, common sense and the rule of law. You know, if they come at you physically, then you have well, tangible funny. evidence. You know, get, keep a video camera, <laughs> buy a surveillance camera. Um, 
go to the hospital if you get raped, you know, that that's tangible evidence. You know, you can put in jail for that. Yeah, you know, the only suggestion I can make is there's a book called The Gift of Fear, and the author says, please pay close attention to that fear. It's, it's real. It's talking to you. It's telling you something. So, you know, don't try to suppress it or back away. That, that's basically what the whole book talks about. Go with that intuition. Guard yourself. Protect yourself. Trust your feelings. So... That that's all I the only idea I have. Hi, this is Western Washington. Hi, Western Washington. Um Go ahead. I was drugged and raped and by my perps and I think she needs to take precautions on A, any liquids in her house, and B, um, any possible access to her bedroom. Um, and if she experiences any kind of uh, rape ex- experience or sensations, she needs to go get a rape kit from the local hospital. And sleep in pajamas, not not nightgowns. Well, that's interesting thought. Well, all I have to share. You know, it took me forever to get a surveillance system in my place. Um, you know, they're oh, cheap God. these days. They're they're 500 bucks, but it's worth every penny. And that combined with some non-lethal protection, get a taser, get pepper spray, get a knife, and you'll have peace of mind. And if anyone comes after you, you know what? Guess what? You have something to call the cops with. You have a police report to file. You, you might even have physical forensic evidence, you know, so... Either way, you're in, uh, you know, just remind yourself of that, and that'll give you mental confidence you need to go through your daily life. Okay. Okay. Uh, Can I respond to that? Someone has a dog in the background. Whoever has a dog, could you please star six on your phone? Okay, it's not me for once. (laughs) I'd like to respond to the guy who said to get a surveillance system. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. My surveillance system was easily jammed, and the whole surveillance alarm system industry is a big, bogus farce. Unless it offers second-party authentication and various other uh, ways of identifying you, it's a big farce. There's a case in Washington State, uh, Superior Court against ADT, and uh, I followed it, and the entire industry is a big farce. So anybody who's home alarm is subjected to somebody coming along with a $20 jammer device who can, A, not only upset their alarm system, but, B, uh, upset their video surveillance. So uh, while I encourage this individual to get a video surveillance system, um, it may not always be the and all be all that they're purported to be. I have tried both. I've had two video surveillance systems. And excuse me, I've tried two video surveillance systems and outdoor game cameras, and they've all been defeated by jammers. Uh, Wow, were they hardwired or were they wireless? Hardwired. But if they get if they get a hardwired system that is not wireless, that would help. But in my case I had a hardwired system and it still was defeated. So 
somehow. I haven't figured it out yet. Derek. Yes? I find out, I just wanted to suggest that the young lady that's having these fears of rape, you know, maybe get yourself into a self-defense course. It's quite empowering. Uh, take your mind off of the fear and empower yourself and learn how to defend yourself. Get yourself a weapon. Um, women need to be, I don't know, women need to just take the fear off the table. These things can be overcome, and it seems to me that this young lady is letting them and the thought of them uh, overwhelm her. If she just took her mind off of that and enroll herself in a self-defense course, it, it gives you strength. I've done that. It just gives you strength. You just are not fearless anymore. When you, when you realize you can take down a man, it is simple, very simple. There are pressure points that you need to be aware of that you can just press unless on. Unless there are have... five men, unless there are like five. I, I well, just, uh, Why would there know, be five? Because why wouldn't there be, you know? I mean, there could be two, three, four, five. That's not so easy unless you have years and years of training. I know, but it would be a great start, no? Be a good start. Start. No, I, I mean, uh, uh, I mean start, one thing she could do is carry, if you don't have a lot of money, carry perfume with you all the time. Right, so right. That maybe you could spray them in the eyes with it. Uh, Derek, may I speak, please? Uh, yes, go ahead. Who's that yeah. This is Becky from Ohio, and I've oh, had hi, this. Oh, hi, Becky. Welcome to the call. Thank you. Um, I've had this experience, and this is really something that I would like at some point in our um, unveiling, I guess. I would like to have this addressed because I think it's a very serious problem going on with this uh, situation, and it's... Um, uh, but anyway, so what I was experiencing was that uh, using the brain entrainment, they will, um, how whatever it's called, hypnotize you or put you in a trance or whatever. And uh, apparently I was getting up and opening the door or unlocking it for them, and they were coming in. And I knew nothing about it. Um yeah, I had heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I believe there was one and these are young people, probably men in their uh I would say early to mid twenties. And there was one per I live in an apartment, so there's one person who is uh, particularly involved in it. Um, but apparently what he would do was like invite his friends over. And so, you know, it'd be like, you know, Young guys go out for a beer or whatever. Hey, what are you going to do? So we'll just go over here and gang bang this lady and she won't know anything about it. And it's lots of fun. Okay. Uh, hold, uh, Becky, hold on, please. Hold on. Okay. Um, I've had to mute everyone so we can start again. Um Hey, you know, I I, I want to I want to thank this lady because Derek, she is getting at what I am feeling may happen to me. So I am so glad that she came on to talk. Yeah, and the, the way I found out about it was, and of course there was all this uh, electronic sexual stimulation ahead of time. You know, that was yeah, going on. Yeah, that's time. what I'm getting now. That's what I'm and, getting um, now. Yeah, so that's your clue right there that that it may already be going on and you don't know it. The way I found out about it, um, definitely, you know, was first of all, it had been talked about on Talk Shoe, oh, probably a year earlier, and I was in disbelief. But uh, so that helped, and it was a possibility. But I had stayed overnight at a bed and breakfast, 
and this bed and breakfast had, and there was a number of clues. There were obviously a couple cameras in the room, and um, there was water to drink. I couldn't get it out of the faucet. And um, so whether I believe it was done both ways, maybe with the water drug or, or, and with hypnotism. And that night I had an interesting dream. I dreamt that I was sitting on a beach uh, wearing my shorts and top and stuff. But the odd thing was somebody was massaging my feet, um, but I was feeling sexually stimulated. And I believed what happened was that the owner, the proprietor, had actually raped me while his wife was probably massaging my feet. That's what I think happened. But the big clue came in the morning when we were all done eating breakfast and stuff, and somehow he passed in the hallway, he and I, and all of a sudden he grabbed me and kissed me. (laughs) And I'm thinking, wow, either he wants something or something happened, you know. Well, then within a few days, I had um, what they call a collapsed pelvic floor. And uh, when I looked up, one of the ways this happens is through a rape. And um, and so, you know, it took me two or three days to realize, to put all the pieces together and realize that that had happened. And then I cried for two hours, you know, and all that stuff, uh, that I had been violated not realizing that it had been going on for some time before with these young men. And, you know, these, I mean, these high school men and young men know this stuff. And uh, so what, anyway, what I did was I only have one door to my apartment, and I bought one of those um, steel door jammers that you put under the uh, door handle. And basically I had heard on one of the shows that um, you have to make it to where Um, because I assumed that I was opening the door for them. I was opening the locks for them. I have three locks on my door. But you have to make it to where whatever you're going to do, you will wake up if you do it. So by putting this door jammer on, if I'm in a trance or hypnotized, for me to undo it, I would probably wake up. And so that's the purpose. It doesn't really keep them out. It keeps and makes makes. It makes it um, more less likely that I will open the door for them, and uh, and so what happened was um, maybe whenever a week or two after this event at the bed and breakfast, I'm sitting in my chair, I'm watching my I don't have a TV, so I'm watching my whatever on on YouTube, and I'm being severely, extremely sexually stimulated electronically. And uh, and I'm thinking to myself, boy, this guy really wants some tonight, doesn't he? You know, this kind of thing. And he wouldn't quit. He wouldn't quit. And I'm thinking, my gosh, what is, you know. So finally, I just got up. This was like 8 o'clock or something at night. And I got my door jammer, and I went over, and I jammed it under that door like uh, you aren't getting nothing, <laughs> you know, kind of attitude. And you know what? This kid moved out because he figured out I knew what was going on. So that's my recommendation is it may already be happening. And my guess is if you're feeling electronically stimulated, it probably is, is to just make uh, your all your doors to where, whether it's putting a chair in front of it. So before I got the door jammer, um, I rolled my office chair over in front of the door because I knew that if I had to remove the office chair from in front of the door, I would wake up from the trance. Does that make sense? Yes, it it does. Thank you. And I already do have something on my door where um, it's like this contraption where from the outside, as long as it's on my door from the outside, you cannot get in. I have to like, go through all of this to get this thing off the door and off my lock. And so um, so I'm quite sure that nobody has gotten in as yet. But okay. um, I'm getting all of the other stuff that you're talking about. And then I was informed the other day that um, I stood a chance of being gang raped by handlers. And I'm just, I'm so scared. Well, and, and that one book that that person recommended, um, The Gift of Fear, I highly recommend. 
that will help you quite a bit. Um, but uh, and and basically, I wasn't aware of anything why they were in here, because they don't really want to be found out. And but this is a crime that I think is going on much more prevalent than people realize. These young men, all they have to do is come up behind you or a young chick that they like, you know, and or an old lady. Someone's I'm a, I'm old enough to be a grandmother. You know, somebody's grandmother, any any woman that's living alone, I think, is at risk of this. And they just get your brain waves and they know how to, you know, put you in a trance. Oh, and, boy. You know, and there's been times where I've heard them talk to me and I was awake. They thought I was in the trance, <laughs> you know. So I know that that's what was going on. And as soon as, and somehow they knew right away I was awake and they they stopped talking, you know. So I think this is very serious. I think uh, there's a lot of women that are. This may be going on much more than we realize, but it's one of those things, you know. They don't even believe us when we're talking about the other stuff. So they're certainly not going to believe this. I wouldn't know how to present it. Of something that's going on, but I think a lot of these high school kids and young men know a lot of this stuff that are, are you know, are not good people. All okay. right. Well, thank, thank you so much. But it sounds like they're really trying to psych you out, and kind of like what everybody's saying, you just have to out psych them. Mm-hmm. And um, but if you're feeling electronically stimulated, um, I. I would probably try doing more things to the door. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank, but thank God you. bless you. Take care. Thank you. Well, thank you, Becky. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's hope we helped out some people here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Cassandra, I hope that uh, information helped you. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, it did. And the the method of the method by which they would use to, um, I knew that that something would probably happen, you know, with my brain. Um, and um, um, you know, she kind of um, outlaid it where I could really understand, you know, what what would happen. So I I I learned. Thank thank you so much. Okay. Well, you're very welcome. Um, I think some a few others have a few comments. Yes, I was um, wanting to comment on the lady before. I think she is probably right that I don't want to scare her, but it is probably going on. The only thing um, that I think that happened different with me was it was definitely a cloaking individual, not like alcohol. Um, it bruises all the way from my ankles all the way up. And I don't know how they knock you out unconsciously, but I know that whole day when I was walking and cleaning my house and that, all of a sudden papers would fall and I kept smelling alcohol off and on. I don't drink. Mm. Um, but it is a serious problem. It is going on, and um, I even went for medical treatment out of town, and I had to spend the night at a hotel. And uh, when I went out to have a cigarette, because I'm a smoker, and then came back in, all the lights were on. And then, um, you know, I kind of checked my room to make sure nobody was in there or anything. And then the same thing again, bruises all the way up from my ankles up, so... It is a serious problem, and if it's a cloaking guy, there you can't see him. And in my house, I do have like a a door bar that has a sound. So like if somebody even jiggles my handle, because I live in an apartment complex, that's another game they like to play: jiggle your handle or knock on your door and run away. So mm-hmm. mine is, um, you can get it through. I think, oh, I forgot the name of the company right now. I think it's hard or something. But anyway. The, the alarm will go off, but just to let you know, there is transportal, 
outspoken people involved in it in some individual's cases. I know for mine, for a fact, there is. And that's basically all I wanted to say. I don't know how to protect it. All I do know is I get very angry. And at times I keep saying I want to buy a heat thermal device to nail their butt, but that's about it. <laughs> Um, that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. Hi, Thank you. this is Western Washington again. I used to be a domestic violence counselor. And uh, what I wanted to add to my previous comments was that um, the day before I had my home alarm system installed, I was drugged and raped. And uh, these people wanted to know the make and model numbers of my alarm system components so they could screw with it and uh unfortunately i didn't uh react to the rape thing appropriately but even the alarm system installer told me that he has three dogs and he knew that the police weren't going to respond in time to his complaints so he has three pit bulls and that was a tip off number one but um DVR and alarm systems are easily hacked. Uh, don't waste your money um, until they have uh, authentication and third party, uh, or I guess second or third party authentication and two other factors. Don't waste your money. Uh, you need to put a bar across the door and a big get a big dog. These uh, things that are called jammers that go under the doorknobs uh, in my house, they just slide across the door and do nothing. Um, you can go to any hardware store and buy a bracket. They're heavy-duty uh, steel brackets. One's in U-shape, and the other uh, accommodates a 2 by 4 and you put them across your door uh, and put a 2 by 4 piece of wood across it, and that is basically... Uh, indestructible um, but I would recommend large dogs get large nasty dogs in your in your yard and uh, put this bar across your door the home alarm systems now are just not uh, reliable anything wireless is superbly not reliable and even if it's wired it can be tampered with. And I agree that's all also. I have to say. Yeah, I agree also with the alarm system. That was a waste of time and money. I thought that the uh, alarm company and even the locksmith, I think the alarm company was in on it. I think the, alarm, yes. the locksmith was aware of what was going on because I actually had one of them, one of the locksmith people come out because I had the lock changed a number of times with all the super fancy locks, so forth and so on, but he yep. looked out at my back patio and he made a comment, <clears throat> which is kind of interesting. He said, uh, and and you're a nice person too. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, so you're used to seeing this and you're, you find oh. it strange that they would do this to a nice person. And uh, so eventually I got rid of the alarm system because that's just one more game that they like to a challenge yes. that they like to overcome. And it's yeah, I have I have high security locks, and they still seem to come through that. And um, I haven't met a lock that they haven't been able to break through. I also rekey my own locks; they seem to come through those. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard one night. I didn't write it down, but one lady was talking about how she had gotten these. Um, she mentioned three different um, kind of uh, locks that she got from overseas, and they specifically had said that they could not be um, mm. keyed or opened in any way. But I didn't write down the one she mm. mentioned because right now I'm in an apartment, and I'm really, you know, I have to go with what I have. Mm-hmm. When I get a home, I will, if I get a home, look into that. Well, you, if you have a Schlage lock, you can replace the core with a Medico or something more serious. Yeah, I did all but, that before when I had the condo, and it was a waste yeah, of but, money. 
Um, I, I mean, highly not, dubious that any yeah. kind of lock could not be broken through. If you're being um, harassed by the police. Yeah, and, then, and they're involved, yes. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Who's there? <clears throat> this is Eileen. I just oh, wanted to mention there's hi. There's also a what they call it at a lot on Q V C you get two for thirty dollars. Um I use that besides the bar. It's only good when you're inside the house. Right. And how the Adalock works is there's a metal piece that goes into the door jam where your bar from your door handle goes in. So when you're putting the Adalock right. in the door you have to put this little metal piece in before you close the door. That is what and I have. Once you... I, I have an analog. That's what I use. That's what I have. Okay, yeah. And that's only good for when you're in the house. Right, exactly. It... Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I know about that. Thank you. Too. Yeah, maybe for someone else, too. Okay, a lot of good suggestions. And uh, good to hear Becky. Uh, after so many years, finally hear, hear your voice. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining the call tonight. Um, well, so I just ho- had to help out that lady. <laughs> okay. Um, can I say one thing that's a little different angle, and this is a horrifying conversation, by the way. Um, I've had experiences where I've been in bed. I have a big tent, so I can't see outside or inside. But I have had the experience of them projecting voices that sound like they're whispering right outside my tent or walking around it. And nobody's there. Mm. So I am going to throw out that they, they do have that ability they were kind of threatening the same thing to me. I honestly don't believe it happened. But, you know, I'd be in the bathtub, and, boy, I would feel the sleaziest person. In, I swear he was in that room, all sleaze. But, you know, then I went to that, that scene around the tent. So I think they were trying to get me, but I had been forewarned that voices can be put in your room to, to make you fearful. So I'm just throwing that out. I'm I'm sure that you guys are in a whole different arena than I've ever been in, and I'm really so sorry to hear this. But I want to throw out the ability to to um, to have voices sound like they're in your room or in your house. Okay. Well, not only voices, but sounds. And I had an interesting thing happen one um, morning. Um, if I may say so, um, because one of the things they would do is I get the electronic targeting at night, and then I would hear this uh, truck or car drive off outside, and um, you know, and supposedly someone, one person had left, right? So one morning, um, I got up about 4:30, and we had had like a, a good three to five inch snow. And, uh, you know, and I I got up because the truck had already left and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, well, you know what, I might as well just sweep off my sidewalk and get that all done right now. So I went ahead and put some clothes over my pajamas, um, my coat on, went outside. I'm sweeping off the snow, and I look out in the driveway, and there were no tire tracks. There had been no truck, but there was the sound of the truck. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I knew a guy that actually heard helicopters above his house, and yeah. he went outside, nothing. Right, so they can project all the sounds. In fact, oh. I'm one of the people that they uh, practice on, and sometimes, a lot of times they use this barking dog, and sometimes who's ever learning to do it, well, they like to put the barking dog in my nose, <laughs> and sometimes the sound of it. And sometimes if they're learning it, they'll get it in the wrong place and it'll come, you know, the the noise will be somewhere else on my face or something. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, well, he missed, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so noises, sounds, voices, 
can all be projected from different areas. Now, I think the V2K is uh, done differently. But one of the things I keep in mind is that all these things take money and that they take manpower. And, um, you know, there's times when it seems like, I think for the first three years I was targeted very heavily with money from my mother's estate. But once that ran out, um, you know, things weren't as extreme. I think out of all the ideas, the bracket one sounds good. Well, and the point of not keeping them out is the point is waking you up so you don't let them in. And, you know, when I heard Dr. Hall talking about um, how they put a camera, you know, he kept insisting that this lady or whoever it was was moving things around themselves and doing all this kind of things themselves and a majority of what's going on um, is done by us through the, and I'm not sure what it is, whether it's the hypnotism or the trance or whatever it's called, but um, then they actually put cameras in there and showed how this person was getting up and opening the door. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, pretty eye-opening for me. That's frightening. Oh boy. Okay. Um, thanks everybody for sharing. Um, because this is a obviously a very um important topic and I don't I don't rec really recall us talking about this specific issue uh at the call. Uh Cassandra was a little shy about uh actually even mentioning this. But it's something that a lot of a lot of you have experience, and you do have uh, information to share that uh, that helps the community, and um, and that's what really this is about. Because there's really nowhere else that we can talk about these type of things. So um, thank you guys for for piping up. Thank you, Derek. Okay, um, if you're just joining us, this is the PAX International Monday Night Podcast. And uh, we have kind of segued into general topics at this time. If you have a question or comment, uh, feel free to start eight on your phone and uh, begin a discussion. Well, it looks like someone has pressed star A, but I can't tell who it is. That's interesting. Okay, if someone has just uh, pressed star 8, um, let me suggest that you um, 
to hang up and call back in and star eight then because um, although there's one place that says that someone has pressed star eight, um, it doesn't show up on the um, on the list of calls callers. So um, if someone has just pressed star eight and has a question or comment, then if you would please call back in and um, try that again. I bet every woman on this call is silent right now. (laughs) Okay. Um, Every woman is silent, you said? Oh, you know, that was a very um, kind of awful conversation. And I just think you just shut a lot of women up. I know I'm just sitting here thinking about it. Oh. Well, um, and you had a lot of speakers up to that point, and everybody got really quiet. Yeah, it's a serious uh, situation. And um, when you know Cassandra called me earlier, uh, last night and was saying um, how she was, you know, afraid, and how she um, how she picked up from them actually. She doesn't have, like, voice to skull, but her handlers do communicate with her, and she feels like they can read her thoughts. Um, and through some means, um, how, however they communicate, they have a way of communicating. Uh, she felt that they were trying to convey to her that um, they were going to, to gang rape her, and so she became frightened. So um, I really uh, did not know what to suggest for her. I mean, you you have to protect yourself, but at the same time, I've heard stories of people being threatened with death in that same way, and nothing happened. So, you know, I look at it right on the line. If it were me, I'd protect myself. I'd probably do the bracket thing. But then I'd also consider that it's a fear tactic. And it may well, never yeah, happen. yeah, of course, and that is something that um she is aware of that it's something to make her frightened, and which it seems to be working quite well at the moment um, so the thing is um and hopefully it's she's still here, let me see if she's still here, yeah, are you still here, oh, okay, um also do well, Cassandra, to uh, to listen to the beginning of the call, um, listen to the recording, because um, 
our guest this evening um, had some very good experiences with um, how he overcame the fear of his uh, stalkers. And this might uh, be of some help for you as well. Okay. I will. Thank you. Oh, well, this is interesting. Somebody who is uh, one of the chatters is requesting to speak. And his, uh, and his, uh, his name is Ella Dell gets paid to curb. And he wants to speak. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what he would have to say. Hello, Derek. Uh, yeah. Hi, Keith. Yeah, this this is Keith. Yeah, thank you for uh, for unmuting me. Um, I'd like to, uh, I don't know, as crazy as this may sound, just uh, maybe make a, a suggestion. And, uh, and and of course, this is just off the top of my head, and it might lead to other ideas. But you know, in these type of circumstances, we really have to think outside of the box. And, you know, what I'm thinking is, is, you know, what can the women and, and, and the men as well to create obstacle courses for the perpetrators to have to go through? And I'm just, I'm just thinking that, you know, what, what, if, what if the women, if they started saving aluminum cans or something or tin cans or whatever and essentially made – like these, these um, like pyramids of of cans that are you know very precarious and and you know uh, have the potential to you know to collapse and and make make a lot of noise and it would it seems like it would make it very difficult for invaders to operate. However, they do. However, they do operate those circumstances with that risk factor of something coming uh, unglued, so to speak. In other words, if if we take enough time to essentially construct something that can't be done in you know just a matter of a few minutes, something that takes a half an hour or an hour or two hours to put together and they have to deal with that situation in whatever type of activity they're involved in. I'm just wondering if that would present some type of deterrent. Um, well, that's, that's an idea. Um, Particularly if if there is hypnosis involved, um, as as Becky had pointed out earlier, um, she needs to do something to kind of um, wake her because she was being hypnotized to open the door for these guys. So um, something like that could you know be useful in that particular situation. Uh, do you feel that uh, Cassandra? Do you feel that? Uh, do you feel that you're being hypnotized or, or is anything like that happening? Um, With... n- n- no, I, I, I can be put to, to sleep. I can be put to sleep, but as far as hypnosis to, to my um, perception, I don't think that that has happened to me yet. Okay. Um, but, you know, uh, putting something up as, as an obstacle, for instance, around your your bedroom, you know, 
that I suppose that can hurt. Um, you do the bracket idea. You could put some kind of bells, hang bells on the bracket. Mm-hmm. Something that would, you know, make, yeah, I don't think you put cans on it, but, you know, things that would knock, make noise. Well, another another idea or maybe kind of what led me to that idea was is that we really need something that is unpredictable. We, we need, you know, I'm thinking, and of course it can't be electronic or digital. It almost has to be you know, somewhat mechanical. But if, if there were some way or if there was something available, some type of alarm that you could actually set that you really didn't know what time this alarm was going to go off, but you were willing to deal with that. In other words, hey, listen, I don't care if it wakes me up at 3.30 in the morning or 5.30 in the morning or whatever time it is. But if if the perps know, if they don't know when this alarm is going to go off and they don't have access to it, then they have to worry about that alarm going off and waking me up at the wrong time. And I'm just throwing that out there for maybe some of the, cre- you know, somebody that's creative and, and, you know, might be able to, you know, run with this. But I think that that's, you know, I think unpredictability is the, that is the thing that these perps fear more than any, anything is unpredictability. And that really, cra- I really believe that that cramps their style. Um, yeah, well, I would agree. Um, you open a door and tin cans fall from the top of the door or something somehow. On their head, in front of them, whatever, you know, as soon as they right. open up. Right. Yeah, set them, set them, I mean, set them on the door, set them on the top of the doorknob. Uh, yeah, I so start, when you open the door, start. the tin cans will fall down. Either hit them on the head or something. You reminded me of... You know, the cartoon or something where somebody opens the door and gets a can of paint on their head. <laughs> but right, I, I like right. the tin can idea. So they open the front door and somehow these tin cans fall on the ground. That would scare the heck out of them. You could, I mean, what about what about fishing line? You get a th- you you know you get some real thin monofilament fishing line, and you start booby trapping your home. Yeah. And, I know. And these I people- knew a girl that was um, a bodyguard, and she had her whole house booby trapped like that. Bells and all kinds of things. So, so if somebody came to get her at night, she would wake up. And and there's something to that. I like that idea. I think there is. I really do. I think I think that it would really make these perps uncomfortable, you know, knowing that they're you know they're going into an environment where, you know, they they have to they have to deal with the unknown. Okay. They have to deal with trip wires and stacked tin cans and and playing cards up, you know, stacked up on the dresser, you know. And if there's too much activity in the bedroom, you know, too much, you know, even a person walking through. I mean, yeah, we may have to walk, uh, you know, gingerly and and carefully to keep these things up, but. I tell you, I really, I really believe that it, it would, it would really present a problem for them. You know, they used to have an item that you put in front of your door, and if somebody comes near your door, it's a dog barking. I don't know if they make those anymore. So it sounds like you got a big dog in your house. Right. Maybe we all need to watch the movie Home Alone. <laughs> Because, because actually, he he was pretty creative, you know that that in that movie, if you remember that. He was. Um, <clears throat> there there might be the fear uh, also that this could happen outside of a home. Um, Cassandra, were you considering that as a as a possibility? Um, I had tried to to get get it communicated to me whether or not it would happen in my home or or whether I would be taken out of my home and I was not given a response. It would you know. 
Oh, I see. You would not give me a response to either, um, either one. Okay. Well, see, that's see, she doesn't really um, know where it would happen, and uh, so that's kind of you know why she's and that's part of the fear. But I have um, I have thought about that. Uh, you know, um, he just may be trying to um, frighten me. But I have had, I have two handlers, and um, they both have um, um, conveyed to me that 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 is a possibility that that um, will happen to me, and I'm scared to death. Okay, actually, you know what? If 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 it happens, you know, uh, you know, if you're um, you know, somewhere in public or something. Um, I mean, you have a number of options. You know, it's pro- particularly if you're in a crowded place. Um, just, you know, if 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 you are concerned about that, just try to remain where um, there are crowds of people, and you you'd probably be safer. I have a whistle on my car keys. Okay. You know, Derek, I remember um, years ago when we went to a rally down in D.C., um, and I remember, um, I can't remember what park we were in, but it was you and me and Juanita and, you know, some other people. Well, I do remember that um, there was this man who approached, us like he was just walking and he had this girl with him and it looked to me like she was being led I mean he wasn't dragging her but you could tell that I don't know it was just something that did not look right and um and in in my heart I just knew that he was going to you know take her to one of those hotels down in DC and was going to do something to this girl, and um, I just remember that. And and she was woke, but she just looked, she just looked like um, almost like she was drugged almost, but yet she was still walking, and her eyes was open, you know, her eyes were open, but he had her um, you know, tightly around the arm, and it was it was just it was just weird, and. I felt really frightened for that girl. And that was years ago. And I've always remembered that. Really? Wow. That's interesting. And so it was, it was during one of our protests, you know, about about this. And I remember we had, um, well, it wasn't a conf- confrontation, but there were these guys that were not far from us. And um, they were, you know, we were bantering back and forth, and you could tell that they, they, these were stalkers. These were, these were perps. And at the same time, this man comes walking up, you know, l- l- like leading, pulling this girl um, with him. And I, it just, it was just, it was eerie. And I just felt really, felt, I felt sad for her. And and so now, um, you know, I. I you know, I hope something like that doesn't happen uh, to me. Oh, well, yeah, I I think if you take certain precautions that, that, you know, I think you'll be okay. We look at a number of, of scenarios, um, so hopefully, you know, you can take precaution in each environment. They also have that you can um, put on your keychain. Um, what you want, if you go this route, is you want the combination of pepper spray and mace. Because some people don't react to pepper spray and some people don't react to mace. So if you have the com- the combination, I've been told. And you can, you know, they make little ones that you can also put on your keychain. Um. You know that 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 sounds good. However, if you are under what the what the uh, lady 
who has come forth and 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 she's given me what I thought was the best advice as what pertained to me. I'm not saying everybody else what they were saying did not have good information, but this one lady who came on talking about brain entrainment and that is um you know that's what I'm really afraid of. So if if you are um um, you know, if you're under this brain entrainment, um, doesn't matter whether you have mace or what. You know, you you're you're being you're being led to to you know open your door and and so I I heard someone speak earlier about a copper headband that and she was speaking um she, she was talking about the uh um the um, mind and, and reading your thoughts, that is what is happening to me. So I, I'd also like to find out more about um, this copper headband, and, and I'm hoping she's still on the line and, and she could tell me where she got it from. I have the same um, thing going on with me, too, the subliminal messaging and all that. Okay, looks like I located where the noise is coming from. Okay, we have several that are waiting to speak, so... Um... Hi, if you're just joining us, uh, we are talking about how to protect yourself from from uh, the threat of a rape situation. So... Oh, no. Did you say rape? Um, a potential rape. You know, it has not happened, but um, one of our members is is fearful that this might be, uh, her perpetrators might be planning that, so. Oh, my goodness. So preventive measures and, and precautions and so forth. Well, um, first, yes, exactly. uh, are there any support groups that she or he might be able to go to um where you if you don't mention some of the other aspects of this um and just go um as a uh stalking victim or you don't even have to explain your situation and there will be other people there and you can learn from them a lot of them are domestic violence victims um that's one suggestion another thing um, is to have on hand an 800 number to call for um, domestic or sexual violence. Um, you can find that. You should that. I think there's a national number. It's well, no, I know each state has a number actually. Um, mm-hmm. So find the number for your state, and it usually is 1 800, and and they will help you. Um, you know, they're, they're of help. And, um, yes, you, you, and there's a sexual, yes, you, you definitely can get help with that. Um, that's just a... That's well, that is true. That's actually very true, uh, Ellen, because, um, mm-hmm. what we're talking about is, um, you know, potential rape, and there are a number yeah. of hotlines, uh, particularly stalking hotlines. You can call them about this. And, and uh, groups, groups, Derek, yeah. too, that, that she or he could, could, could go to where, you know, um, um, you know, uh, their um, support groups and call, um, have her, she, he or she call the um, uh, Often it can be the YM, well, no, the YWCA or um, there's one in every county and in every major city and in and every small city. Some place a support group and you go anonymously and you maybe fill, some out, fill something out um, for their funding. But you don't have to give a lot of information or any. And you can go to the meeting and you don't even, you can just listen. 
um, and they have publications and things, and I, I would do that. And, um, yeah, um, and don't be, if you can avoid it, don't be alone and um, keep your doors and windows locked. And um, I can think of someone, something that someone, is there any, is there any trusted person you could stay with for a while? Um you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Just think of it in your mind or whatever. But anyone that you might be able to stay with for a while and then make wherever you are look lived in like you're still there. And also you could put a trap on the phone, um, you know, um, have a recording in, uh, don't record it in your own voice. Have it in, in someone else's, maybe some authority figure, a male, if you're female, male. Um, I would do that. That's one thing. So those are a few suggestions, and I, I hope any one of them helps. Thank you. Those are great. Those are great suggestions. But I'm the lady with the copper headband, so I'd like to answer a previous question. Yes. Uh, the entrainment. Uh, I was entrained. Uh, my friend was entrained. Uh, they send. Uh, I spoke to Barry Trower, the scientist in the UK. He said these mic- voices are microwaved in, and. Uh, I thought it was my neighbor's smart meter having a new radio with the new model smart meter trying to tase me. But he said, no, it's not, uh, the voices are not a radio. So um, I originally developed the copper band uh, around uh, a derby, like an Irish St. Paddy's Day derby. And it worked really well for EMF and sensitivity to Wi-Fi. So recently I... um, went to the metal place and I got some uh, thin copper, $5 a square foot, comes in foot long rolls, and I made a four inch, the other one was like an inch and a half, a four inch solid copper uh, uh, a circle that I put, it fits on several different hats, so if I'm wearing a, a broad brim sun hat because it's been 120 degrees last month and a half here in Arizona, they're really upping the cell towers and the radiation. They're trying to cook us to death here. The four-inch one uh, works really good. So what I did tonight at a community dinner, I took it off the hat because I could feel the smart meters in the back of that building. And I just put it over my eyes and I pinched it over my nose so it stayed in place. And it really, really felt good. So you're not only protecting your retinas from electromagnetic pollution, but I really think it helped with the voices. Because what I did was I hung mobiles of copper scraps around my house with copper wire, and I created little holes with hammers and hung little pieces of quartz crystal from them. And then the voices, and then I covered my new analog meter that I pay an extortion fee for with a copper plate and take it off every other month when they come to read it. And the remediator came and measured my house with the big gigahertz solutions meter. And he says having that copper cover on my analog really didn't change the meter readings of my neighbor's smart meters and the cell tower down the block that much that I really didn't have to worry about uh, that. I said, well, I hate to tell you this, but ever since I put that copper plate on my analog meter and hung these mobiles up, the voices tried to get through, but they got interference. And the copper, I believe, and the aluminum mesh that I put around the cat shelter on the top half, about 25 feet by 10 feet around, and I think they can't get through because I heard them trying to get through and it was all staticky and cracking and then they tried again six months later and they gave up. How, so, Matt, can, could you describe the the hat again, please, the, the materials? I, I, I get any hat. Now, you can go on e, lessemf.com and buy hats. 
And I got the head net from them for $80 plus 10 shipping. It's a new item they have, which may not be in the older catalogs. It's a, a, a nylon head net. It could fit over a hat or it just comes down to your shoulders. Uh, and it's uh, nylon sprayed twice with silver. Mm-hmm. You can rinse it off in distilled water briefly so that it's not like the silver threads come out. And I found that that was great. Um, it, it blocked when I felt the uh, my neighbor's smart meters tasing me across my property late at night. I would put that on with the silver eye shield they sell. And even just a half an hour of that during their high tase uh, hours from like 4.30 a.m. to 5.30 a.m., mm-hmm. uh, um, that really helped a lot, and I have 24 packs of bottled water. I have 120 of those lined up around the garage because I how sort do you, of... How do you collect all the those? How do you do it? How do I do what? How, how do you get that quantity? Uh, no, my a friend gave me, uh, I think, 80 of them, and she used her neighbor's truck, and those things are heavy. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're heavy, but... She gave them to me for free, and then I found them for sale at Color 88, so now I have 120 of them stacked up. It's not as many as I want, but when you put it perpendicular to itself, it works mm-hmm. better just flat along one wall. Yeah. And you put it against the wall where the meter tells you it's the most uh, tasing, and I analyzed that it was coming pretty much from the back alley, but that's where the meters are facing. And yeah. I, there's only two people in my whole zip code that got the safe meter back. So this is like electrocution city. So, yes, the copper band was uh, actually a suggestion of a former uh, um, engineer who's now a stock boy at the local grocery, which I can't go to anymore because they have new l- lampposts and getting ready for the five uh, a gigahertz um, blanketing Wi-Fi. Oh, from Google, yeah. Well, not just that. It's also from the government saying it's renewable. Ha ha. This one is killing people renewable energy. That, that they must have thought about their Berlin meeting a month ago. That's what they all convened to try to play dumb. Yeah. The eight is renewable. Yeah, right. And but fluoride is good for your teeth, too. Could you could you say again, uh, please, uh, the... Copper, you said something about five copper and then the five square inch and the four square inch. Well, I had I had a two inch copper band around a, a little hat that I found, you know, for a dollar at the St. Patty's Day. It's not quite my size, but uh, it it kind of just fit right on it. And then I went to the metal place called Industrial Metal. Mm-hmm. And I found out that it didn't have to go to the scrap pile. They had rolls of copper that had different thicknesses. And then wow. I found that it doesn't have to be the thickest. It could even be a less EMF cell uh, copper mesh screening. Yeah, and, and that's nice. But if you're on a budget, maybe to get that industrial metal, you might be yeah, able to go to a scrap place like and get it. You just need like two feet because it works better as a continuous band rather than the one that I had in two pieces of scrap kind of pushed together. But you can get some scrap and then uh, I duct taped it in the back so it wouldn't come loose and it wouldn't cut me because the thinnest copper is so sharp Mm -hmm. that you have to handle it with care. The one that's a little thicker that I have covering my cell phone case Mm-hmm. To some of the radiation uh, that is uh, has a thicker edge, so it doesn't cut me. You see, but it's ten dollars a square foot as opposed to five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got twenty five feet of that, and I just cut. Uh, I put it around the cat shelter, and I just cut a piece off of it the other day because I wanted to see if four inches would be better because they're upping the meters to between one and three watts from a quarter of a watt. They're up yeah. in the Wi-Fi, or the cell towers on every block, two or three now. I'm taking pictures in the chemtrails with the aluminum, you know, and, and shipping people with metal, metal this, metal that. Uh, so a lot of electrocutions, too. 
the nurse with the radio show in uh, Memphis asked me to do more research on that, and I've been sending it to Joe Esposito in Oklahoma and Curtis Bennett in uh, British Columbia. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lo- I, I have that I- going on for a, almost a couple of years, and I, I knew something was wrong. But um, when I was going to school in my adult life, uh, um, trying to get another degree, and of course I couldn't finish because of you know what was going on medically. But I had to, I would get a oh a terrible shock once when I thought you know I mean these shocks were terrible, and I knew there was something, but you know to what, find did out. Did you get a shock because I had a leg cramp taking a class last summer at ASU West. They yeah. couldn't shut the Wi-Fi off in that one building. And yeah. they had all metal chairs, and my leg was just seizing. And yeah. I had to stand up, and I last this last week of the class, I brought my own chair. Yeah, you know, they had. Talking. In fact, it was when I was using a phone. That's right. It was when it was using. I was using a phone. I mean, it was a very high, you know, con- concentration of Wi-Fi, and they had just installed something on the you campus got too. On your hand, your your arm. Where was the shock? Um, to my head. Oh, a sharp shock to your head, and your phone was on your ear. Well, it was the campus, one of the campus phones. Um, but there was, so a, was there were a lot of ante- antennae. It was a land- hmm. It was a landline phone. Um, I think so. It could have been a decked. I have to stop and oh, think. It yeah, it it was a landline. Oh. Yeah. Well, the Wi-Fi alone will give you a headache. That's five, two point four billion cycles per second on sixty yeah. wiring, sixty cycle wiring, and then you have uh, your thinking is eight cycles per second, and when you sleep, it's supposed to be zero point one. So yeah, I I have to protect. Billion it. cycles a second is not compatible with nature. It's illegal. And they've been uh, FCC has been okaying a plastic head with water in it for 20 years, saying all wireless is safe. But they only actually regulate the lower bandwidths. They have nothing to do with the upper bandwidths. But everybody, all the health departments in all the states were never told that the testing for wireless devices and technology were done using a plastic head with some kind of fluid in it. Yeah. And circumventing all regulations using building codes from the 1950s, where mm-hmm. you didn't even need a fire extinguisher in the kitchen. All you needed was a bucket of sand. That yeah. was the only requirement for a fire code at that time. And the asbestos issue was taken care of, you know, for the so asbestos and the lead for the it's for children. The fibers. It's the fibers that, when the fibers got loose, that's what you were breathing in that was bad. The, the little fibers, like the sawdust that they're claiming and the talc, the lead and the powders, it's the little things that get in, the nanoparticles. It wasn't really the asbestos itself. Oh. In fact, it's so tinyly shredded. Anyway, let's get back to the copper band, because, yes, I do well, believe... Let, can yeah, you, maybe maybe you could email me something on that. I um. Possibly, but maybe we should let other people talk, or or maybe, um, you know, for the situation. Well, there was a lady who asked specifically about the brain entrainment. And okay, go the ahead then. If, if Derek, if so Derek agrees, know yeah. If she had her question answered or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Derek agrees on the other, if if ever if everyone, sure. I mean, if if I don't. I don't hear anyone else on the line, so. Hi, this is Deborah. Uh, I wanted to speak up again because I'm a former domestic violence counselor, and at a minimum, this woman should call the National Association Against Domestic Violence. The hotline number is 1-800-799-7233. Oh, good, good. She needs to work up a safety plan. Mm-hmm. with her local domestic violence agency. And contrary to someone's former comment that every state has one, they don't. 
Montana and a lot of Midwestern states do not have any domestic violence agencies. So oh she needs, the national yes. number then, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I she, thought every state she needs, had one. No way. And she needs to call this number and get uh, hooked up with somebody that could help her. And the other number that I wanted to give uh, out loud was... Um, Sandra, are you hearing this? Uh, Cassandra, her line is is open. She might not be near her phone, perhaps. Well. Um, Okay, well. If if she doesn't come back to the to the phone soon, uh, Deborah, I. Uh, I can place you in contact with Cassandra because it sounds like you have some important information. Yeah, I wanted to give out one more number, if you would, please. And I'd be delighted to help her in any way I can. Okay. I used to be an advocate. Um, There's a national organization, and I forget what the acronym is, but the website is org. And that's for uh, sexual assault and rape victims. And their number is 1-800-656-HOPE. I suggest you be in contact with either of these organizations as a base, basic, you know, contact and work out a safety plan. And if she uh, thinks she's under some kind of electronic assault and so on, certainly she can pursue that with us uh, at a further level. But as a minimum, she needs to work out a safety plan, and those agencies are the best to do that for her. Not any of us, you know, throwing out this and that and this and that. Okay, uh, thanks, Deborah. Mm-hmm. The, um, if, uh, if we don't hear from Cassandra, uh, you know, sometime tonight, um, I will, um, you know, if you want, I can place you in contact with her. Absolutely. Please do. Okay, thanks everyone for your suggestions. And um yeah, I had I had forgotten actually that she wanted to talk about that this evening, so hope so uh fortunately she did speak up about that. You know, it's it's very important that that you know, that we help each other because as I said earlier, we there are very few other resources that we have. In this particular case, there are some alternatives. Um, and uh, that she can utilize. But in a lot of instances, uh, we don't have um, that luxury. So, um, and I'm sure she appreciated the information that that all of you provided, so. I just wanted to add something before we get off this topic. Hi, it's Roseanne. You know, a few people have mentioned all the places she can go, and I think this is a really important thing. Um, We think that we can't reach out for help or document any of this abuse, and we can. You know, we might not be able to say we're being electronically harassed, but we can talk about a lot of the things that are more mainstream and we can ask for help and we can 
go to support agencies that deal with crime and document our case and become public about it because that serves to protect us. You know, the one thing these people don't want is exposure. So the more people that know about what's going on, the better in your case. And, you know, just don't talk about the electronic harassment. It's not known. You're just going to complicate everything. But if you're having break-ins and you're having computer sabotage and you're having all the rest of it, then, you know, you can certainly talk about that. And if you have proof, um, you know, get out there and talk to your community about it and say, gee, I'm being attacked. And, and you know, then you become more of a public figure in your community and you know what the perps want to do is discredit you they want everybody to think oh she's just crazy nothing's happening so the likelihood that they're going to do anything really public like a rape um, goes down a bit because you you already have the attention of you know, professionals in that in in law enforcement or community support. You know, we have agencies here that um, you can go to for elder abuse, for um, domestic abuse. You know, and I suggest you do that, and you just take whatever information you have about the normal crimes. Forget the rest of it. You know, you don't have to talk about multiple stalkers or electronic harassment. Talk about your house being broken in or um, your things being stolen or your personal property being destroyed, you know. And I actually have done that in my community and I've gotten pretty far with it because I, I can prove those things. And, you know, people take me seriously. And, you know, go to your city council if no one takes you seriously and say, look, I'm going through all this crime. I would like to make this a matter of record. Because once you're known, they have to be more careful. They can't just, you know, do big, big things, you know, Um, because... Then everybody's going to say, oh, my God, wait a minute, she was complaining about crime. Oh, my God, look, now she's a rape victim. Oh, and now this has happened, or now that's happened. And that's going to decrease their um, ability to hide what they're doing. So, you know, use that strategy. And another thing is, and, you know, we we keep talking about this and we need to talk more about it and come up with some way to do this. And that is, you know, just living together. And um, I'm, a, I'm up against that right now, you know. Um, I'm trying to decide whether to invite more people into my home. And, you know, I've had a lot of perps in here that have, sabotaged things, they've broken things, they've, you know, done all kinds of things. So it's really difficult to decide what to do, but, um, you know, we should come up with some guidelines for, you know, um, how to do this, because it just seems that there's such um, opposition to it. In fact, there's a plan to keep us from getting united in this way. You know, um, they they set it up so you don't trust anybody. and um, You know, they only send perps to your home and, and things like that. So really they're wanting you alone, and we all know that. They want you alone. You know, but in reality, if you're living with people, what they can pull off is greatly decreased because you have witnesses, you know, they're not going to come in. If there are three people in the home and rape a woman, you know. Um, so we really need to figure out how to 
how to accomplish this. And, you know, I know that they can mind control people to fight and distrust each other and all that kind of thing. And, you know, that's really difficult to deal with. I've gone through a lot of that in my own life. I'm going through it right now. But um, if you know that's coming and you're just sort of sharing a home in a complete business way, which is we don't have to be friends. We know they're going to try to break up a friendship. What we have to um, decide is how we're going to protect ourselves. And then even if we don't speak to each other, those rules are in place. For instance, the house is never left unattended, period. You know, um, just certain rules that you decide upon to protect yourself. And then, you know, realize that any kind of friendship is going to be compromised. And, and, you know, don't even go there. Just you have a straight business agreement of mutual protection and um, well, what it takes to achieve that. Um, you know, we have to we have to break the back of this somehow. Uh, too many people are being hurt, and I'm re- you know I'm really trying to figure it out, like how we can protect ourselves. Um, because you know I'm heavily targeted for my activism, and yet again. Um, you know, people know me because of it. So there's a certain amount of protection to that. But, um, you know, we just have to get smarter <laughs> somehow and, 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 and look at the, you know, look at the problems. And do realize that, okay, rape is a part of trauma which is a part of mind control. However, it's not really widespread in our community. And um, they do control us with fear. Um, And I also think that they want us to tell each other really scary stories to to heighten that fear. So that we will not step out of line, so that we will not challenge them, so that we will just be in a position that's beneficial to them, you know, which is cowering in our homes, afraid to do anything. And, um, you know, so keep that in mind. Um, Yes, this happens, and we all should take precautions, but... It's not that widespread. Um, And the last thing is, they've developed a rape defense in Africa, which is sort of a condom that you put inside of you, which is destroys a man's penis if he tries to rape you. And um, they're having very good results with it. It is stopping rape. Because um, it's it's hard to know when you're wearing this, and a few men have been mutilated, and it's gotten a lot of attention um, in the press. So I don't know if this is commercially available or anything, but I think it's a, a really interesting story because this has always been a threat to women, and. Um, you know, it's just interesting that someone's taking that approach. I, 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 I'd like to ask, what search terms would I put in Google to find out about this device that's deterring rape? Oh, boy. Um, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I saw it a while ago. I'm trying to remember the words. Um Try rape condom destroys penis. Um, you know, and and 
you know, just try variations of that if that doesn't work. Um, I can't really look at my computer right now, but... Um, that it was in Africa, they, they're using it in Africa? I think the story came out of Africa. Okay. Now I'm trying to remember, I could be wrong, but I think the story came out of Africa. Okay. And, you know, they've had tremendous problems with rape in Northern Europe. Um, because they let in so many refugees, and some of them were bad people. You know, they didn't have um, the time to really look into their backgrounds. And um, especially in Sweden, um, the rapes were going through the ceiling. I mean, women were afraid to come out. They were getting attacked on the streets. Mm. And women were afraid to come out. And... um, the men in Sweden actually banded together and they started patrolling the streets. I forget what they call themselves, but the men took it upon themselves to get into groups and they were armed. It's, you know, you can have a gun in Sweden, no problem. And they were armed and they would just patrol the streets to stop this. And um, they were doing a good job of it. And, um, that sort of militia approach, for lack of a better word, started going on in England as well. But, you know, it was just like, no, we're not going to let our women be raped. And so, um, you know, there's a lot going on about this issue right now. I, I would do a general search, too, about rape defense, maybe. But to look for, yeah... Uh, Hmm, rape condom destroys penis. That's all I can think of. Um, you know, it, it, I've heard of this before. Uh, you might look up anti-rape condom. Um, this isn't the first time I've seen this, but it's the first time I've seen a story of a man who who lost his, his stuff because he tried to rape a woman. You know, it was very serious um, damage. And, you know, the word got out, and, you know, that might stop men from raping if you can't tell who's wearing one. Um, yep. You know, it's an Hello, this is Melinda. Place. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, hi. I want to add to what uh, Roseanne's saying. Uh, there is a patent um, uh, that was created, and I think you should have this information in case anybody doubts you. Uh, it's a method for artificially inducing urination, defecation, or sexual excitation. It's patent number 3,941136, and it's uh, Dr. Uh, Bucalo, March 2nd, 1976. What, what's the patent number again? Yes, it's um, a patent 3949316. 3, 3,941136. 3,941136. It's 3,941136. It's 3,900,041. And I'm... Ah, uh, it's too late. Anyway. Spell doc, spell Bucalo? Yeah. Bucalo, B-U-C-A-L-O, at the Neuron, Neuronx Corporation in Albrook, New York. What? And, uh... Spell his name. Uh, yes, yeah, spell it. B as in Bob, U-A as in cat, or excuse me, B-U-C as in cat, A-L as in Larry, O. First name Lewis. And you know, and, if they are doing it electronically, uh, there will be no forensic r- remains. If they are not doing it for, uh, forensically, if there's an actual human being there, there is always forensic. And boy, if you could just get some tape and have tape available and just tape all over you for hairs. Now, you know, assuming he's wearing a condom, there won't be fluids, but there'll be something. There'll be some stuff. Just have big, thick packing tape 
and just tape everywhere. Okay, and it was called Method for... Let me see. Uh, method for artificially inducing urination, defecation, or sexual excitation. And one more time, and the patent, please. Sure. Three million nine hundred and forty-one thousand one hundred and thirty-six. And the person who's really looked into this is Helena. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, do you have? Uh, I uh, well, how to get a hold of Helena? She's not on the call tonight. I will email her. And uh, let's see, um, maybe have her on Karen's call tomorrow night or something so you guys can touch, uh, get in touch with her. She really has really studied this and uh, all the different sensations and things like that. And if you have that in your purse, just say, oh, by the way, you think I'm nuts? It's patent number blah, blah, blah. That's great. That's because if you say I'm being raped electronically, they are going to get you ready for the loony bin, but if you pull out a patent and say, this is going on, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there You're certainly so is a, there's a difference between the, 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 the rape as the, 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 the face-to-face kind of rape. Well, that's what I said. If it is vis-a-vis and with a human being, you've got to get out tape and pick up forensic evidence, you know. Sure. There, they always leave it. If you watch CIS, I mean, there's always evidence. You just have to find it. Now, unless he shaves his body from head to toe, which most men don't. Yeah. I would like to interject a real estate precaution. Is this a good time? Okay. What is your question or comment? I just wanted to let you know that if you have a house full of people that you're trying to get to protect each other, there better be a contract because if you get somebody who's posing as somebody good and they're really evil you, you, and you want to kick them out, they have a, a, the, their right as a tenant for a squatter. So you better have a real tight contract available that if they're asked mm-hmm. to leave, they have to leave. Know what I mean? and, uh, I think yeah, the more protection, I you, Roseanne, yeah. you give yourself uh, on paper, everything on paper. Just protect, protect, protect. Because you know I had that piece of filth stay with me for six weeks, and he said he was a T.I., uh, Jeffrey uh, Todd Weiss, and he wasn't, I don't know. He spent three years in Rikers, and he never told me, and he was just awful. And spread terrible oh, no, things no, about no. me. Listen, I had a, spread terrible I had a, things about me. So, wow, my good heart yeah. was closed up pretty damn quick. Yeah, you have to have them screened. You have the criminal background check. You have the credit check and everything, just like a, any real estate deal. And I think a yeah, dog I is would, a good idea, too. Having a dog is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, no, I had a... Uh, supposed security person staying with me who broke a window in my home and threw my phone into the bushes and called the police on me. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, I know all about this. Um, Fortunately, she was so crazy that the police sided with me immediately. You know, and then there's just, another guy that I had here. I, I wish she was here, Len. You know, the, the mad scientist who used to get on the calls and speak for a few hours. And I miss him terribly. Um, and you have to figure that a lot of them don't have any money. Right. So that's yeah. another issue that, you know. But it is an yeah, idea. Yeah, no, this is a, you know, this is a very, very tricky subject. Um it's one we've been trying to figure out for a long, long time. And it's how to protect ourselves in numbers. You know, if, if you've had the, you know, I, I still go back to the RV park concept or something like that, you know, where you're not really living together, but you're all there. And, uh, you know, you, if there's trouble, 
you know, you're not living with the person, um, and you can evict them from the park, but, you know, there's a number of people there that know what's going on and can, you know, support each other and, and watch each other. And, you know, no one's going to come in. If you have a high percentage of real TIs, it's going to be hard for anything to happen in that park. Well, there's such a piece of security when you leave your house. That was one thing I did not, the peace and security when I left. And now I just, you know, dread the fact that that piece of filth could come in. And they've already now wrecked the gaskets on my refrigerator, so... You know, they just can't let my stuff alone. They just come in and ruin. They're real filth. So, oh, but having people story. there is 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 almost worth its weight in gold. It's yeah, you're right. Yeah, the they destroyed everything in my home. You know, I just evicted a few people, and um, you know, before they left, everything in this house. Oh my God, you know, I'm I'm trying to fix it up now. It's, I mean, they were actually good people, and and. You know, I got a prompt from my property manager to evict them because she didn't like the way they were keeping house. But, um, you know, they caused, I'm in a rental, they caused the owner of this property thousands and thousands wow. and thousands of dollars. Wow. You know, the, the, it, it was, you know, like every single thing in this house broke before they left. Wow. You know, How do you do every, that? How do you do that without being intentional? Well, you know, what they were doing, I believe, was, uh, you know, I'm not one who stays in my home. I'm out all the time. I have a life. And so, you know, I don't think these people were evil. I think they were actually targeted. Um, and all they had to do was open the door to the right person. You know, that's... Yeah. All they had to do because I couldn't be here to watch what yeah. was going on. So you know, someone can come in and oh, they would do s- stupid little things like blow the pilot light out on the gas. Um, oh, that's dangerous. Right, right, and and you know, and then they would do great big things. You know, um, you know that costs the owner a lot of money. And I think the basic thing was to increase the owner's expenses so he would raise the rent on me and then I would I would get out of here. You know, because there's a huge, yeah, there's a huge push to get me out of here because I have a lot of community support. A lot of people know what's happening in, in my town with me. Um, you know, so... They've kind of lost their edge just a little bit with me, so, you know, the next thing would be to get me out of this town because I'm well-known here. You know, I've been very public. I'm I'm extremely public, and um, that works against them. As I said, it really does. You know, but I haven't gone out there and said, said, you know, I'm being electronically harassed. I have posted information about electronic harassment, but, you know, I went out with the the normal crime that was happening, which I could prove. And, um, you know, it's 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 there in black and white. You can't really uh, deny it. You know, I have signed statements from witnesses and things. And so, you know, I'm a difficult, I'm a difficult case for them. And I'm mm-hmm. sure they would like me in another town. They would like me far away from here so that they can, you know, harass the hell out of me without people already knowing that I'm a crime victim. You know, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, that's the latest, is, you know. So, you know, now I'm trying to figure out, you know, do I let someone else in? <laughs> you know? it's, I feel bad well, because... Got or, room you know, you, and people need it, but geez. yeah, and and chemistry, chemistry, and you know reliability and integrity. Yeah, yeah, that's so important. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know that's hard to um, determine up front. I mean, you can check backgrounds. I've had really good people in here, but they were still playing a role. You know, they were still letting people in the house, you know, and, you know, 
Well, maybe you can have you know, the 24-hour um, camera like they do in parking lots. Just have it run. So, you know, the camera's on, Tommy, so you don't have to let anybody in. Or you give me a call before you let anybody in. That's not going to work. And I tell you, they can knock out a camera very quickly. And another thing they can do is knock you out very quickly. Yeah, I'm just you thinking know? of your guests. Protecting the I have fallen asleep with a cup of coffee in my hand in between sips. <laughs> you know? yeah. Now, you know, that's abnormal behavior at 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, and I wake up because my, the, the cup fell to the floor. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was totally unconscious, so, you know. I'd be hitting your nervous system, yeah. Well, there's some kind of wave, I don't know what it is, delta waves or something, which just puts you to sleep. Yeah, yeah, Fader. You know, it's well, doc- it's well documented, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, so you really, you know, once it gets dark, lock everything up, um, make sure it's all locked from the inside. Um, you know, the doors in my home where I couldn't... Um, you know, put a uh, some kind of analog lock like um, hook and eye. Okay, mm-hmm. I I had I developed this um, procedure uh, uh, way of locking all the doors in my house by screwing in two of the uh, eyes, the you know the little loops that you get at the hardware store. Yeah. Uh, Put one on the door and one on the door frame, and then put a piece of wire through and tie it. You have to be careful. You can't, you know, block yourself from escaping from a fire. Well, you can get out of that very easily. You know, you could just use heavy rope and just, you don't need a big, you know, you don't need to knot it and knot it and knot it, you know, just a couple of knots. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that door cannot be opened. From the outside, well, I, get, put you shims. Okay. I have four shims in my door spread out, mm-hmm. and so for yeah. me to open the door, because I think I open it for them, and I put a screwdriver on the uh, in between, uh, so they can't put a credit card in the uh, flip latch, which they can do. They put a credit card in, open that bar. So I put the right. screwdriver and four shims. Really attractive when it, I go to bed. I'm, you know. And I tell you, I have not slept in pajamas since I've been targeted. I sleep fully clothed, and um, I have pepper spray. So, you know what? I'm looking at this as reality. Um, We're in a war. We're being attacked. We're in a war. You know? And you've got to, I like to say, soldier up. You know, you can't pretend life is just the way it used to be because it just isn't. And so we're being attacked. We're in a war. And, and you know, I wouldn't sleep in pajamas in a, in, in a bed. I wouldn't do that right now. I don't do that. You know, I sleep fully clothed. I have pepper spray. Um, I'm aware of my surroundings. Um... I've got, you know, I've got a screwdriver jammed into the garage door, so you can't possibly open it. Uh, I've got uh, wood in all my windows, so you can't slide them open. Um, but you know, even if someone gets in, I'm, I'm kind of ready. You know, <laughs> and, and but, the, <laughs> but the 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 biggest way in which I'm ready is that so many people in my community know what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest way in which I'm ready, which is why they really want me out of town. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, the, the push is unbelievable to get me out of here, you know, because too many people know, yeah. which is, a, a, you know, it is protection, and, and you can do the same thing. Don't mention electronic harassment or multiple stalkers, you know. And don't don't get into anything far fetched, you know. Just say, "Gee, I've had vandalism to my home, my car, my property. 
I've had stupid things stolen, you know. Um, my computer's been hacked, you know. Just mention the things that people will accept and, and you know, mention them to a lot of people in your community, you know. And if I you do. Have food, you do. And, uh, yeah, and then I had the police over initially, but, you know, no evidence. I mean, you know, so I haven't had them back. I don't call them. If I were to really be hurt or something really valuable stolen, I'd call them in 10 seconds. But yeah, only and for you that. know, you have to really get smart about collecting evidence. Like a lot well, of my I do, evidence... but you know, there's no, there's no uh, uh, command. There's no chain, chain of command with evidence. Uh, there's no way to keep it. They wreck it. No, you do keep it in the hard copy with you at all times. And then you even send it out to other people. You you make copies and you send it to any anybody you think is off the radar, people in your past you haven't talked to for a while. Just say, hey, I'm having a little bit of trouble. Just keep this in your home, would you? Send it off. Well, I you know? have. Pardon me. Um, I'm taking it by a salad. I have weird evidence I don't want to carry around with me, like dead bugs and eggshells and you know stuff like that. But okay. no proof who did it. So. <clears throat> You know, there's a lot of, okay, here's an example of evidence, okay? And all, a lot of times we're too upset to think about these things. But um, I was on, when I had a car before they, I decided I couldn't have one because they were just going to keep destroying it, I uh, I was driving to um, get a smog test in California and obviously didn't, they didn't want me to do that because they didn't have time to tamper with the car so I would fail. So they actually shot out my tire while I was on the road to get there. And they must have done it with, uh, I don't know how they did it, but um, I got a flat and I called AAA and I got towed to a tire place. And these were nice guys. And they took the tire off, and they came out, and the guy was looking at me really strangely, and he said, "Um, what happened to your tire, man? And I said, well, gee, I don't know. I was driving on the road, and it just went flat. And he says, well, you should take this tire to the police right away. He says, you have three holes in your sidewall. That's impossible to get on the road. Unless you drove into something which had sharp protruding objects, nobody has holes in their sidewall from driving. That's just about impossible. And I said, really? I said, how interesting. I said, listen, um, would you mind signing a statement about that? And they said, sure. So um, while they were changing the tire, I wrote out a statement, and they signed it. And then I went to the police, and I showed them their statement. I went to my mechanic. I showed him the damage in their statement. I had my mechanic sign a statement as well. And <laughs> excuse me, everything that's ever happened to me, I mean, I'm a... a a royal pain in the ass because I get people to sign a statement about it. You know? And um, in that way I've been able to document it. You know? And it's not just me saying, this is happening to me. You know? Um, I've got all kinds of statements from mechanics and um, all kinds of things. Um, you know, so, and and when, you know, I did go to a local psychologist because I was applying for state crime victim relief, and they wanted me to go to a psychologist. Hello. Hello. Hi. She got disconnected. She'll be calling back probably in a few. Oh, wow.
And one more pause here. We have just uh, oh, about 50 minutes, five zero fifty minutes uh, left in the call. Um, and if anyone has uh, um, a uh, call-in number they'd like to um, to offer after this call automatically closes in about 50 minutes, uh, feel free to come forward at this time. The damage done to me is when I'm not here, to my appliances, to my food, things like that. So it's really, really difficult. Plus, uh, you know, electronic at night. I mean, like they're hitting me in the back right now, really bad. It's, you know, just not provable stuff at this point for me. Okay, uh, you, let me you see. Had a... Cassandra, are you still on the, on the line? Yes, I'm I'm here. Okay, there was a lady uh, on the call earlier. I don't know if you heard her or not, but she was um, she was had, she's some type of a counselor, and uh, she has had experience. Um, and she, I think she said she's some type of a. A counselor for domestic violence. Uh huh. Did, did you hear her? I did hear a, a a a lady. She had spoken a couple of times before, and then she came on and and said at one time, yes, that is what she um did. Yeah, I think I I heard her. Oh, okay. Because she was offering a lot of really practical suggestions for you. Well, I did walk away for a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to you're taping this right, Derek. Uh mm-hmm. huh. I'm well, going to listen yeah. to the recording. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, you should listen to the recording, and also uh, you should probably speak uh, to this lady. And I was telling her, I said, well, um, Cassandra may have stepped away from uh, the, the telephone for a couple minutes. Um, yeah, I did. She, uh, did you say that. Yeah, so- okay. You know, she might have some good uh some good advice for you. So, um she's not on the call right now, but I said well maybe I can connect uh you and her and, and she might she has some use some very useful information it seemed uh for someone uh in your situation. I would appreciate that. Thank you, Derek. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, we have some noise uh, coming from someone's line. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. I can't tell where that's coming from. Um, If you have a question or comment about any topic, feel free uh, to star eight and I'll open your line. Eric, can you hear me? Uh, yes, who's there? Is CMF Linda? Oh, hi. How, how are you tonight? Good. I'm good. Um, thanks for asking. You know, um, Amy Anderson just called me, and uh, she said she was going to get on your conference call. And so I'm thinking, uh, you know, if she's there, that this is uh, just a perfect time for an update about uh What's going on? You do you see um, her on your screen or whatever? Amy, Amy, girl, you are you on the conference call? Okay, uh, Amy, uh, you'll need to start eight so I'll, so I can tell where you are if you'd like to speak. Okay, I see a couple of um, people here in California, um, but they haven't uh, started it. Oh, I wonder if she remembers you got a star eight. Northern California, Derek? Oh, hold on. Looks like. Okay. Uh, Amy, is that you? Amy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. There you go. I just wanted, okay, I just wanted to give everybody an up-to-date 
I'm basically um, going to get my uh, official to go with me to my doctor when I make the appointment, and he's going to be in conference with people like Derek and others and with my doctor, and we're going to talk about a plan to action to dismantle the lie has been told on targeted individuals to state that we have have some mental issues going on when we are targeted to cover up these types of crimes. So I thought that was a blessing in disguise and a miracle for me and others to work together to pave the way for ourselves. Because if we don't do it at the local level, then we know it won't be done at the highest level because that's what a problem is. So the right thing is to take this problem to the streets of America and let the American people know that these things are really happening to us and for us to put out books, for us to do as much as possible, go and do marches, campaigns, uh, lectures, conferences, anything. Thing we think we have to do, we can do to get the word out. It will be our to our best advantage. We can't sit back and complain about the things that we are going through. And I'm also studying the depth of this mind control V2K. How does it really work on my mind? How? What is the difference with my thoughts than a generated thought coming in that causes confusion in my mind that does not add up to logical thinking that allows that has me speaking a long time and repeating myself where it appear like people don't understand what I'm saying. I have to go into myself and understand that these people were speaking with me, through me, at the same time with me, arguing over me, oh, oh, arguing with me over my own thoughts. At the same time, trying to be me. So once I discovered those things, I had to say I have to go into deep thought, think about what I say before I say it do more meditation because I'm not going to allow nobody to argue with me in my own head. If they ain't man or woman to argue with me face to face, forget about arguing with me around in my head. I'm not going to be arguing with nobody I can't see. That don't make no sense. That keep that computer software Alive, I got to kill off the programming in my mind. And to do that, I have to know, go back to the part of happiness, the part of my mind before I end up being abducted. I always was a human subject. I didn't know it. And the reason why I know, because the pattern was confirmed to me that I was targeted that we all know about. The gang stalking, the unkindness, the mistreatment of people, that was happening with me in my childhood. I just didn't know what it was until I became really targeted to the extreme to know what it was, and it's part of the plan to have you thinking that the world has been turned against you and that you don't no longer have a right in society. When these people isolate us and get us in that state of mind, then that's where the severity of the trauma begins. So what I've been doing, I've been meditating. I've been thinking a lot carefully about who I am, not this generated thought that's coming to me that will mix the thought of of who I am to make me go into some argument or I get on the road and all these different people programmed to 
seem like they are working against me, I use my common sense to know if these people can program my mind to manipulate me and cause me this great bodily and physical and and psychological harm, they can do the same to others. Now, the thing what I have studied, that they're using it lesser on them to use them as an indirect target to target us so they, that could be a discourage a, a mechanism to discourage us to make us think that okay, all of these people are against us, and if we think like that, yes, they will. It will they will sell us an illusion. But we gotta get past these illusions. Be more friendlier this year and any other year with people that seem not to be so friendly with us. So we can start to see, is it this person really acting this way or is it that, is it, or is it them just, just having a bad day or is it really the computer trying to use that person's mind to make us think, okay, we better not deal with that person no more because that person is not going to help us. That's by design for us not to get the help and support of the people. So now that I dismantled some of the, the mind manipulation being on uh, put projected on other people's minds, I'm able to get more support from different directions in the city of Richmond. I might not have it at full like I want at the at the po- in the police department, but eventually I will because I'm continuing to chisel away the different techniques or tools they have in place to keep the people as a blocking mechanism to discourage as a form of discouragement so that they're hoping that I wouldn't continue my journey. So what I'm doing is ignoring the, the no's and keep finding the yeses the people that will work in my favor and just keep on, you know, doing what I'm doing until we get to the level at each and every level we are all on striving versus plus the ones over in other countries. So eventually this will break and we, the hardworking people that's targeted in groups know about this we will one day have our victory that we are striving to have. Thank you for allowing me to share. I know you don't have no questions for me because there's nothing I, for you to really ask me. I left everything. I mean, I hopefully I just laid out everything to you based upon my lengthy conversation. Thank you again. God bless the American people. I don't celebrate Independence Day because why celebrate something where it doesn't apply to you and you are not free? However, the intention of that was for people to be free. So I'm not living a lie. It is not independence for me. I am striving for my freedom, justice, and equality as a Muslim following the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you. At this point, Amy, we are all striving for our freedom, you know, from this uh, this uh, uh, technological tyranny that we've been subjected to. I'm with you, uh, you know. Yes, Linda, that is right. That is correct. Well, thank you for sharing, uh, Amy. Um, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like we have lots to uh, to celebrate and to rejoice uh, about, and you know, in terms of freedom, uh, we're not completely free like lots of people are, but. You know, I do appreciate the amount of freedom that we do have. Um, we are free to the point that 
we can do what we want to do. Uh, it's the perps, really, who are not free. They are the ones that have to slink in the shadows to do what they do. We have the freedom to go what we want and do what we, do what we want to do. But they have to keep their stuff. I agree. I agree they are with the ones you. that have to slink in the shadows and do what they do in secret. And they have to remain secret because what they are doing is illegal. And if they were to do what they are doing in the open, they would be caught, arrested, and prosecuted. So we are more free than they are. You are right. I agree upon that. I don't take nothing I wouldn't add or take nothing away from that statement because I feel the same way. And, in fact, I got angry and said exactly to what you said to them because we all know they can hear us either which way we look at it. And I have been telling people that you watching the TV and these people are looking at you on the other side of the TV through these smartphones. So I have been talking to the people throughout the communities and letting them know that this is a serious matter. And, in fact, I'm working with some brothers in the Nation of Islam talk, letting them know that is done through the music. They are decoding the the mind control through the music, sending out subliminal sound waves and TV and radio waves through these innovative technologies, here, having people hear an acoustic sound waves that they would not normally hear. They are creating a harmony of a of a effect that is hearing effect that is entrainment to the brain messing with the natural radio in the head. So when I talk to the people like that, they relate to it. And this is what we want the people to know. There is such thing as a natural radio in the head of a human. Now, what is happening to that, these people are tampering with it and saying that the people tamper with the head, the the radio in the head, and messing with the sensors and the body, causing the body to act awkward, strange, and work totally incomplete in opposition. And I tell the people that it works in complete opposition to contrary to what a natural function of a, a, a human function, of a human function. So when I share these things with people, they start to open up to relate. And some of these people start to wonder, are they targeted? So those are the kind of conversations we want to talk to the people about because then they even wake up even more so. And Ken Rose had printed me up some DVDs. It was like a 40-minute segment with Peace and Telly, my interview. So I'm going to get that out to you all through uh, different ones, and you pass them out. And and it talks basically about the government patents. And I also want to share that that anybody come into contact with those who are targeted, they some type of way be victimized. And that's one of the things I think that happened to Pete Centelli. And as a matter of fact, I know that's what happened to Pete Centelli. That also happened to Reverend Pinckney. That also happened to former Mayor Shogwe Lumumba and the one that connect us up with them, you got to think about these people do not want to get this operation up because they are some sick people that can, that's also some control freaks. When you get somebody that wants to control the minds and the body of people and treat them like a doll, a mannequin, and and feel like they best their job and duty to do to people like that. We need to hang these people out to dry.
Okay, thank you for sharing, Amy. We now have about, oh, about 25 minutes uh, left in the program this evening. Derek, have you have you talked to Jesse or heard any of the work that Jesse Beltran is doing? Because he kind of dropped off the map. I know he's doing his own thing, but I haven't heard of, of him. I haven't heard from him and others. Do you know where these other activism people at? Like, uh, who is it, Eleanor White, and what's her name? What's the other lady's name from the Bay Area did that uh, um, DVD? Was It was the other one besides Eleanor White. What's her name? Did a DVD about She's from da- Davis. Oh, you're talking about Cheryl. Well, Cheryl, Who? you know, all three of them are still around. And I do, I, you know, I've heard from them. You know, yeah, Cheryl sure Wells. Yes. Cheryl Wells, yeah. So she's, uh, uh, it's been a while since I've heard from Cheryl, but I've heard from, uh, you know, Eleanor is still on the forums, and so I hear from her from time to time, and and Jesse once once in a while, once in a blue moon, I'll hear from him, and um. And Cheryl, it's been quite a while since I've heard from her, but uh, she's around. She's doing her own thing. Um, she basically has taken up the role of a researcher, and well, she. Has- see, I would like to hook up with these people. See if you can connect them up with us. Okay. Well, um, Ellen White is. Uh, she's still involved with the forums, and she. And that's basically, I mean, if you join MC Activism, you would hear from her every day, just about. Uh, so she's still doing what she usually, what she's been doing for the past few years. Um, as far as um, Jesse, uh, he's very active on Facebook. And, uh, and I, you know, I see his posts from time to time. And well, um, I want I want to hook up with uh with uh Cheryl Wash. Oh Cheryl, well Cheryl is still yeah. around, and uh, actually someone has um. Contacted. I need to get a contact. Okay, that's what I need for you to get to me, so I could talk to her about our plans. Well, uh, Cheryl is um. Well, she's pretty much withdrawn from activism at this time. And so, I mean, she does refer people to our organization that are looking for assistance. But as far as her, you know, participating in in activities, she has really never participated in anything. She's into research, ain't she? She what? She's not into sharing research. Sharing research. Um, I mean, yes, once once it's completed, you know, if she has okay. an article that she's written, she will, um, you know, inform us that uh, she has something published. Okay, well, we want to share research with her, too. Mm-hmm. Um, she might be... She might be um, signed up for the newsletter. Uh, as far as I know, she is, unless she may have gotten dropped off. And um, But as far as I know, she is signed up. Yeah, because, see, she did a lot of work with getting on the TV, but then she needs to do something with the other people that came across their targeted and doing up to date of a new series of a ver- new version of what had ha- what she know versus the growing uh, pace of the targeted individuals that's coming out and speaking out. And then she went from one end from Sacramento to San Francisco, but then she needs to know 
that we are all over California. And I oh. know she knows it, but she needs to put something together. And even if she don't, we need to. I want to do something in the Bay Area that, that will raise the awareness that we exist. So I really want to see about putting a plan of action in that um, in that area. Okay, well, um, I would say get with uh, Layla and some of the other ladies uh, there on that group. Um, I guess if you're not on the Internet, you may not see uh, the emails, but she has, you know, kind of developed a group. What you could do is, um, you know, get with Layla and uh, organize a meeting. Now, that would be something that you guys uh, could really, uh, I mean, you guys haven't met in a while, so you're probably about yes, due for a meeting. Yes, we did. We, well, well, we went up to, the, to that I mean, meeting. yeah, it was a you, uh, Amy, that met there. And uh, a few of you met um, not too long ago at the FBI office. Uh, but your list has grown considerably, that list of, of uh, target individuals. Uh, you may not see that it has grown, but it has. And if um, if you were to get, to get with Layla and uh, decide on the time and place. Oh, I, I, I did see it. I've seen all the emails. I just want to get with, with with them so we can actually do something else because I want we got to keep going around the cities and stuff and raising awareness and getting these meetings going. Oh yeah, you know that uh, that meeting that you guys had a while ago was quite successful. So um, that should tell you that you guys uh, need to do that more often and preferably a city where you have a number of targeted individuals, where you have a presence there. Um, the well, numbers... I definitely want to go to Santa Clara where that, they pass that order in. I definitely want to go there and work, sit down, and have meetings okay. with those people. Okay, well, San Jose has, um, you know, maybe a couple dozen TIs there. So. Okay. Um, you may want to get uh, some TIs together there, and maybe their council would listen to, um, to them. And if that is successful, that would be tremendous. We need to have um, more cities. Yeah, and I will tell you, you know, by um, uh, with this meeting in Petaluma that uh, there are officials that will listen. Of course, you already know that. Uh, and um, they will respond, and they will help the eyes. So you just got to talk to the right one. Right. So, um, and and that's a matter of you know if if one doesn't uh, doesn't listen. So they got to find next. a way to come across them from the beginning in a creative way without having a bad experience, kind of like we kind of did with Nathan and overwhelm them, and then we didn't get to the level we wanted to, but we still can go back to those people. We just got to wait a while and go with the full uh, uh, city officials because that one city official said he didn't want to meet alone. He wanted to meet with everyone else. Well, um, now Nathan, he told Nathan that, but Nathan has to be careful about that, and I did call and share with Nathan that I didn't feel it would be wise for him uh, to speak to the council for three minutes. That's not nearly enough time to explain our program. And if they, if he does that, they could prejudge his uh, his uh, his topic and uh, decide that he was delusional, or whatever, and that would inhibit any further uh, contact with them. I okay, think that so one, that one of the things. I think that one. Hold on a second, Amy, please. Listen to this. I think that one of the reasons that that cities have these three-minute sessions where citizens can come before them and present their topics. I think one of the reasons they do that is to screen out who they want to, uh, what topics they want to support, and which ones they do not. 
So any TI that comes before them and only has three minutes to explain their targeting situation, that basically, um, I mean, I've seen this happen, that they come away from these um, these uh, three-minute sessions and counsel has uh, prejudged them as, as uh, mental cases. And I've seen that um, on at least one occasion, and then it's happening uh, in Los Angeles with uh, Humanity Warriors, even though they have been back multiple times and a few other cities as well. I believe that they use those three minutes as screening sessions. So uh, target individuals would be advised not to uh, present their case, to present their cases at these sessions because they will... um, uh, more than likely be screened out of uh, being able to speak to council members. So I would advise people not to do that. Um, I'm going to tell you what they should do. They should build a relationship up behind the scene. Keep meeting with these city officials. I'm going to tell you what target individuals I have not heard you all say. I have not heard you all say that you have been willing to go out to some of the functions and show up where the city officials be in the city you reside in. And that's how I build up the relationship. I caught these people inside the community doing their work as a city official. And then I started getting up under them and talking to them. And then I started meeting one like Merlin Langlois. And she was a former mayor's secretary. So if you don't get to know the inside of your city officials and get a relationship up with them before you tell them you targeted, it's going to be hard for you to listen, them listen to you the way they got it in place to set up as if it's not happening. So I'm saying to you all, go to the functions. Get on the calendar. Go find out. Ask them when they meet before you want to. It's kind of, let me tell you what I found out. It's kind of like going to somebody and saying, pay me for the job that I want, that you want me to pay. You, I want you to, I want to serve, I'm going to service you. Um, I'm, I can the job. I'm gonna service you in order for you to pay me. Pay me now. So if you go to the people without building up a relationship, telling them something that you know from the beginning was hard for you to believe, then put yourself in somebody else's shoes, and then you will have a guideline of not being so anxious to tell them I'm a targeted individual. I used to do those things, but I found out that was what was keeping me from getting close to the people. So you go to the functions, hang out with the city officials, let them see your face. Then you tell them, say, look, I need to meet with you, but I need to meet with you with the whole council. So I need to share some information with you first. So then me and you can you can build up a relationship with me and a group of people where you will know that I don't have no reason to come to you telling you something that will waste your time. So you got to get at people like that. And if you don't know how to get at them like that, then it's hard for you to get to the level you want to get at them with about this type of compelling information. So again, okay. go point, to the function. Okay, that is a good point. Um, it does take a while uh, to to uh, to build up a rapport with these officials, and um, no, really, it could, is, it'll take you two months, Derek. If you if you find out the function, if okay, look, like if they got a function this month, two two three functions in that one month, start talking to them then. Then find out what you and them people have in common. Then you do that for six months or three months. You get the relationship that you will want. That that it it took me a long time because I didn't know that. So when I went out and went to functions with these people, I got a real strong relationship with them. Okay, well that's an excellent plan, Amy. 
um, because, um, and that's something that we as a community need to learn to do, and that is to build up uh, a rapport, a relationship with these officials, and that's a good way to do it. So thanks for sharing that. And that's an excellent idea. Uh, you do have to meet with them one-on-one, and I would urge you, urge you, urge you guys not to try to go to these council meetings uh, when you try to speak about your issues for three minutes. That uh, inevitably, uh, that has never worked. And, uh, and it would only prejudge the representatives before you would get a chance to, um, to speak with them. Uh, personally, one-on-one. So um, I would advise a private route first uh, to speak with them uh, in their office. Uh, As Amy said, you know, um, mingle with them in the community, Uh, go to their events, Um, you know, speak with them one-on-one. So that's a good way to do. They also should go to the city meetings, go to the city uh, council meetings, but then talk about relative things that the other people know about, but then you could talk about something that is not right in society. And, and an example of just uh, people deserve to be treated right, equal. We need to be in a safe environment and community um the the we thank you city officials for wanting the city to be in a to to be a safe place for us and and wanting to uh, take these offices start going like that first start building it up because see i would go talk about things that they would talk about with relative just dealing with the city you know how we were before we would be targeted go start talking on them levels of related things that you that they know uh relative things that they can relate to and versus uh i always want to talk about this first so then then once you talk to them like so once you get the meeting, they already go remember hearing you and seeing you talk about something concrete that they say, oh yeah, that lady that was I remember she's been or the man she they would come in they would say something pleasant and so go in there and say something encouraging about different topics. Then when you have the meeting. Yeah, so I remember seeing your face because it's something about the human mind. If you don't know the name and you see the face more, you be, you pretend you begin to seem like you know the person just from their face, although you don't know the name. So that is another form of relaxing the person, uh, um, so where they can receive you better. Versus they never seen you before. You coming to them and telling them about something, and you never went to the city officials or city meetings, and they never saw you. And that's another weakness, I think, is in in um, how they plan on us. If you're a person that never went to the city councils and you go tell them you harm and they never saw you hardly in your city, that kind of make you look funny too. So I do encourage you just to go to your city meetings without telling them you targeted for a minute too. Thank you. Okay, well, that's a, that is a good plan, Amy. Excuse me, And yes. so all the things that uh, that Amy has been doing to build up a rapport with her city officials, so I hope you guys are making notes. Um, these are all great suggestions, Amy. And, um, you know, I would advise everyone to listen to what she's saying here. Um, and these are, these are ways that you can build up a rapport with your representatives. So um, good suggestions. Thanks, Amy. Okay. Yeah, I have a question, please. Yes, hi. Go ahead, Cassandra. Yes, I just like to ask. A, a while ago, you all were talking about Eleanor White and how hard she is to get a hold of. And you were saying if you joined some kind of activism or something, you could hear from her every day. Is that what I heard you say? Uh huh. Well, t- where do I go to um to get on her her list? Um, there's a um. Uh, Okay, you have to. Do you have a Yahoo account? Um, Yahoo. Uh, uh, no, but I can. I can always create one. Okay, well, she's a member of a Yahoo group called MC Activism. Are you saying M is in Mary, C is in Cat? Right, MC Activism. 
Okay. Um, if you were to look that up in Yahoo Groups and um, and send a request to join that particular uh, Yahoo group, it's moderated by um, by Alan Barker. He's the uh, owner of the group. And um, once you join that, uh, she, you know, she posts uh, pretty much every day. So you'll get to, uh, you know, to hear from her you know, on a daily basis. But I have to have a Yahoo account. Yeah, just sign up for a Yahoo account, and you can join this Yahoo group. Thank you. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Derek? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's uh, EMF Linda. If I could have two minutes, uh, I uh, I think you uh, there's uh, something that you and and everybody uh, Amy uh, should know about another plan on the national level uh, that's already uh, been spoken about. It's, it's in the works, and that is. Uh, did you happen to hear uh, Joe Esposito on Shelley's call, the Saturday night call, by any chance? Uh, no, I did not. I'm, I'm hearing some things about him tonight. Uh, what, is his, uh, what is his background? Well, uh, that's that's not the point. He's a he's a uh, he's he's also called the Meter Man. He's a wonderful person. Lives in Oklahoma. Uh, had become electrosensitive. Has now found a, a purchased a, a a suit uh, that is um, protects him from uh, about 50 decibels. Of, uh, of radiation, of wireless radiation. The point is, though, uh, that he suggested, you know, he's an activist. He, he goes out and um, and uh, helps remediate uh, uh, people's environments and, and teaches. He's, he's also a writer. He's uh, written over 150, 15 weekly articles in a in a local paper there, the Banner in Oklahoma. But here's, okay, well, thanks. That's just what I was asking. What his background is? Continue, please. Uh, the point is that he has a plan uh, that he suggested uh, on the national level, and uh, as Amy mentioned, you know, we need to uh, identify and hold people accountable for what they're doing. And and one of the uh, main uh, places where this this whole thing has spawned from, it's been created. Uh, the, the technological stuff is the FCC. Now, the head of the FCC is, is Thomas Wheeler. He was a former lobbyist, as you probably know, uh, with the telecommunications industry. And then he was appointed by uh, Obama to chair the uh, uh, Federal Communications Commission, which has brought us a uh, 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 disaster uh, that we're all living in. Uh, uh, um, okay, so, so how is Joe Esposito, what's that got to do with accountability? I'm about to tell you, if you let me. Uh, Joe Esposito has come up with the idea, and uh, he's going to, uh, as I understand, talk with uh, Shelley more about it. He's come up with the idea because uh, uh, the FCC is poised to sign off on yet increased uh, uh, wireless radiation on us. Uh, with, I think, 5G uh, within a, a, a relatively short period of time. And so what Joe has suggested is that we uh, we uh, 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 just inundate uh, his office with phone calls. Now, this is a simple, easy, easy thing that everybody can do. You know, not going to cost anything, and it's a uh, labor labor uh, light. So, um, uh, Amy, I think that you ought to, ought to get in contact with Joe Esposito. I can certainly make that happen, or I can give out Joe's uh, number uh, online, but I think that it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a kind of like a, a partnership, uh, you know, with uh, Kelly, uh is uh, uh, involved in it, and Derek, I, I would hope that you would support uh, this idea too. What do you think? Okay, um, I need some more information about this, this plan. Um, 
Don't okay, when, like, you know, like when is this supposed to happen? Um, is this uh, a regulation or is this something that's going to happen through Congress? Uh, I, need to, I need some more information about what, what this is about. Right, right, right. Well, granted, you know, I need more information too. Uh, but uh, and Joe Esposito has it. Uh, uh, I don't know if Shelly has it by now or not. Uh, but uh, uh, if, if you moderators uh, can all get together, uh, and then the community leaders, you know, uh, uh, Joe uh, suggested that, you know, we could, with a, a massive a number of, uh, of phone calls, you know, shut the uh, shut their uh, their phone communication system down and, you know, uh, send them a message. Uh, yeah, you know, our group couldn't do that, but maybe in conjunction with a few other groups. Um, if there was something like that that needs to happen. Eric, I thought you had 4,000 people on your contact list. Um, well, there are. However, um, only a fraction of those will do anything. So, like I said, you're gonna, if you want numbers, you're going to need you're talking about um, other groups as well. This has to be a concerted effort. Well, no problem. My other foot, uh, Derek, I, you know, I'm, I'm here kind of uh, bridging the thing between the TIs and then, then there's a, a whole another uh, global movement that, uh, frankly, I think you're kind of unaware of, and that's the, the rest of us that are, are, are uh, suffering also from uh, electoral hypersensitivity. Right, right. Well, that's what I mean. This would have to be... Uh, a joint effort with uh, perhaps the EMF community, uh, you know, our efforts joining with uh, the EMF community, which is much, much larger than our group. Right. That is that is right. I'm glad you recognize that, but there's, like, no problem because we have a common goal is, mm-hmm. you know, regain uh, our, our freedom from uh, electronic harassment and surveillance and and the, the torture, uh, et cetera. Okay, we probably have about a couple of minutes left in the program, but uh, maybe you can bring this up uh, either privately or next Monday. Okay, uh, uh, Amy, Amy, girl, are you still there? Amy? Yes, Linda. Well, let me... Uh, no, I want to. I, you know, we could do a three-way call, uh, uh, but let me give you Joe Esposito's uh, number. He's just a hell of a nice guy, and uh, uh, if you, uh, I think you ought to ought to hook up with Joe. Okay. Okay, give it to me off the phone, so I can uh, call him with you on the phone together. Okay. Well, then then we can do that like tomorrow. Yeah, I don't okay. Know that. All right. But uh, he's a, he's a public. He gives out his number, uh, and he he helps people. Uh, uh, you know, okay, uh, well that's no problem. Just call me tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Derek, uh, how are you for uh, hooking up with people? You uh, oh, you do that uh, do that kind of thing. What do you mean? That's all I do. Well, here, here, are... Here's what I'm. Here's an idea. Uh, uh, here, you know, he is just a wonderful guy. He's a good speaker. Everybody likes him. Uh, um, he's a uh, he's tireless. Uh, how's about having him as a guest uh, on on your program? You know, it doesn't have. To, it can take up as long as you want. You know, an hour. Whatever. Okay. Well, I mean, it sounds interesting, but um, um, I still have to. I still need to uh, a more of an understanding of what you know, who he is, you know, what he does, what group Peter he represents, Man. and things like that. Because right now, I am unfamiliar with them. Huh. Well, I guess then you don't listen to some of the other moderator shows, huh? Uh, not a lot, but um, I guess the question I have is, is he in the EMF community or is he in the TI community? Well, he is. Uh, he started out in the EMF, uh, but he's learning quickly about the TIs. He's absolutely open and, 
and uh, interested and curious, and and, uh, and I've already, uh, you know, he's already got his toes wet uh, about the TIs. You know, I I, I uh, read him some of the documents that that. Uh, you know, oh, I see. Okay. He's he's a. Easy, well, easy. Uh, why don't you uh, why don't you call me tomorrow and we can talk about this? Yeah, okay. Uh, he, um, like I said, there's a uh, with him as a guest. He, he, uh, Shell had uh, 120 people uh, on her uh, Saturday night, approximately. How are you doing tonight, uh, uh, Eric? Oh, uh, uh, I haven't uh, checked recently. But, you know, the important thing is the material that he has to offer, how relevant it is to our community. And that's what that's the barometer that I have in terms of bringing a guest on to the program. So if you want to talk to me about that tomorrow, I can make a decision. Okay. You know, he, he, he calls himself, he has a website called The Meter Man. He is all about measurement and, and shielding and uh, trying to make life uh, uh, easier. He has pretty much kind of achieved that through various means on his uh, two and a half acres in, in uh, outside of uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, however, there are so many uh, cell towers and stuff around that he's no longer able to run the steers and the, the bees died too. Okay. Well, you know, I really don't want people to be bored, but I just, you know, it has to be something relevant. Well, do you think that's irrelevant? Uh, the uh, the delivery system for torture? Uh, no, I don't think that's relevant. Um, I mean, I don't think that's irrelevant. Um, you know, like I said, I just need to know more about what he has to say and what he has to offer the community. That's all. Well, you uh, can... You can talk about Tomorrow. Okay, or here's here's this. You know, all you have to do is look on, you know, Google the meter man dot com. Uh go there and you'll you'll see what he has to say and what he does. Uh, uh Okay, I mean I've listened to calls that were not particularly relevant and it just bored people. So, um even though it has some relevance, some relevance. Um, just hearing basically what he has to offer. Uh, if it's not basic, if it's not, if it's not really um, germane to our issues, it could uh, very easily bore people, and they won't ask questions. And I've oh. seen that happen. So uh, that's all I'm asking. You know what it's about. Uh, if if 120 people stayed on the call for three hours, apparently on Shelley's call, he they didn't find him boring. Okay, uh, Linda, can we just talk about this tomorrow? That's all I'm asking you. Whatever you want, Derek. But I'm tell you know, uh, he's you know you invited me to be a guest on and talk about shielding. This guy knows more than I do, a lot more. And he's a better speaker. Well, uh, shielding, shielding for the MF people is, is a little bit different than shielding for our issues because, um, you know, whatever our shielding uh, modality is, the probes usually find a way around it. So we have to keep piling on more layers or finding ever more creative ways to shield. So if that's a difficult topic for us, and it's, it has to be something extreme in some cases. Well, that just doesn't make any sense to me. But I'll, I'll talk with you. I'll, I'll be happy to talk with you tomorrow. Uh, well, it's very easy. Non-targets can shield very easily. They can put up a layer or two of, of aluminum foil or something, and they'll be fine. In our case, it's a lot different because this is intentional uh, radio frequency assaults, and they're a lot more directed and a lot stronger. No, Derek, the only reason that I have able to protect myself with sheet metal and uh, layers of aluminum foil is because I uh, eliminated the delivery systems. I am, as I've said before, cell phone free, computer free. Uh, I have turned off seven out of eight circuits, electrical circuits in my uh, uh, apartment. I, uh, I have no TV. Uh, uh, these are all the same delivery systems by which the TIs are tortured. Some, well, some people, 
Some people uh, have done that, and it has helped, but that's not been the entire answer. Uh, I'm not saying that it is the entire answer, but, it, 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 you know, it, uh, it allows my uh, surviving in a, a generally uh, pain-free state. Uh, which is is a lot more than uh, uh, you know. Uh, a lot of people these days, you know. Uh, okay. I'm saying anyway, is that if uh, you're under attack, you may not be pain pain free, even if you do all that. 